nothing to worry about. Just fine. I'm your number one fan. He just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. Hang up on me again, I'll cut you like a fish. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? What an excellent day for an exorcism. I am right. I am a child. I am the eater of wolves and of children. I bring you the greatest goddamn episode you ever seen in Nights of Horror Radio, episode 9. With me today, you know him, you love him. I'm trying to figure out this mic scenario, we'll see. It's going to be an ongoing struggle throughout the entire... It's okay, we'll figure it out. I'm joined today by Rob from The Howling Hour, who's been just everywhere... Like you, you, you're with, you're, you're joining things, you're doing your own things. It all just balanced. That why are you? Hold on. Now I got to figure this out because there's no audio coming through for you, and I don't know why that's. But for those who didn't hear, it's because you know life doesn't. You know, you know he's balancing out life. That's all it is. Yeah, that's all it is. That's why. Like, yeah. There you go. How about now? Hello? Did I just get a follow or something? We got, hold on. I got, I got to check the, we got a, oh, Vertigo resubscribed one tier. Appreciate it. Yeah, we need Rob Audio. I'm trying to figure out Rob Audio. I don't know why Rob Audio is not coming up right now. That's, uh, hold on. Let me see. Well, you're coming through for my, you're coming through for, Oh, hold on. That's good. There we go. Is that? Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Chat. Hello. He's in. We got Rob. Yeah, I'm in. We got Rob. All right. That's that's it. that's just live. That's just how live shows work. Is there's yeah, technical difficulties? You know, it's yeah. We're not perfect here. You know, I know. But that just sh that just shows your skill level is that you were able to handle that on the fly. On the fly. On the fly. Rob, welcome to Knights of Horror Radio. It's a pleasure to have you on. It's been a while since we had you on the Knights of Horror. We need to get you back on more. Yeah, well, you know, uh, scheduling, man, just my work schedule sucks. It's just summertime, so, you know, it kind of just works out. But work, yeah. man, that, that's always that's always the great killer of scheduling is work. <laughs> it really is. I, yeah, it, no, it, it is, and I get that. And not to mention, you know, you're doing your thing over there with uh, – the the haunt talk, which you guys yeah, should check out. Pretty big. It's pretty big. Doing that's big things good over one. there. Ten yeah. episodes in. Congratulations on the double Thank digits. You. Thank nice. you. Double digits. We uh, you know, just that's uh, a decade almost, right? A decade. That, that, that's like a decade, right? I think so. Is that ten, ten years? Ten. Ten, ten decade, decade, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, ten episodes, knows. ten ten years, ten episodes. <laughs> who knows? Uh, like the same thing. <laughs> it is really is, man. We got a lot of fun stuff to talk to talk to you guys today about Night's Horror Radio. Um, last week going on vacation Thursday, they announced Ghostbusters, uh, Frozen Empire for Halloween Horror Nights. Um, I know you and uh, Scott have talked a little bit about this. Uh, Want to get your thoughts uh, to see what your your thought process is in going in this. Also, we are going to be talking. Um, I got some exclusive video that I filmed while out in Vegas of the latest construction update for Horror Unleashed, the year-round Halloween Horror Nights. Ooh. It's looking amazing. We're going to show you the exclusive first look here on Nights of Horror Radio tonight of our construction update, and then we'll be releasing that across social media later on uh, tomorrow. So, yeah, exclusive first look. So there's that. Mm -hmm. And also nice. uh, a lot of things have been announced this haunt season, and I have not talked to Rob about it in a while. You guys have probably been keeping up with Rob <laughs> across a couple different platforms that he's been uh, voicing his, his opinions in. We're going to talk to Rob tonight about his thoughts on Six Flags, the return of Dark Harbor 2024, and uh, a lot more in the haunt world. We're going to kick it off, though, with the, uh, the news that broke last week, uh, last Thursday, uh, Halloween Horror Nights, both Orlando and Hollywood, 
for 2024 are doing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire based off the most recent Ghostbusters Frozen Empire film. Um, first and foremost, not a huge fan of that one. Okay, okay. I mean... The I'm movie. The movie. I wasn't a right, huge right. fan of the I'm, movie. Right. I'm going I'm to agree with you. I wasn't... Um, I feel like... I feel like the the movie was kind of all over the place. Now I will say this in, in in a positive note, the last I would say thirty minutes of the movie it got a little darker and a little more crazy. Right. I did I did enjoy that, but for the most part, you know, the movie I was just kind of like, yeah, it was alright. I actually preferred um after I thought Afterlife was a little better yeah. than Frozen Empire, but you know we're getting Frozen Empire, so you know just I, I feel like there's a lot of um spooky scary things that they can pull from that movie so i'm not too i mean we've seen we've seen uh before that you know a movie doesn't necessarily have to be a banger of a movie for it to to be a really good house or maze at horror nights right yeah and you know so with you know that being said about the movie you know I have to say, I think I'm a little bit more excited for the maze than I am than I was for the movie. And that's okay. aspect of, you know, in in 2019 when we got the original Ghostbusters, you know, a lot of people said that it wasn't going to work. A lot of people right. really talked it down. I remember I was one of the actual people that was on the other side of that fence. I'm like, give it a shot. This could work. It's a great property. Um, it's that great mixture of horror and comedy. Right. And I think they could pull off something pretty unique. And we were blown away. We really were. I think I, I don't think we were expecting them to pull off the ghost effects that they did with the black lights right, and, and right. the darkness. That was really cool. To see some of the most iconic scenes from the first film was really cool. I think if you take some of the aspects of Frozen Empire and also maybe include other other aspects of other Ghostbusters movie. I think Horror Nights can really create something more on the originality uh, based around all the IPs uh, rather than having to focus on just the one. However, that being said, what I did like about Frozen Empire was the ghosts. I thought the ghosts okay. looked really cool. So I'm very ex that's why I'm very excited for this maze because I can't wait to see what they pull off, what scenes they pull off with the ghosts. Um, Slimer, obviously a fan favorite. How they're going to pull that off again, that was a lot of fun to see them pull that off in the original um, yeah. and of course the, the main ghost itself that, that, that's causing the, everyone to be scared, you know, to they fro to they freeze to death, literally scare them to death. Uh, I'm excited to see that, you know, Horn Nights is not shy of doing big set pieces. Uh, right. if I, if I can refer your memory back to alien versus predator, uh, the big alien, uh, queen at the end right. was a right. huge set piece. And that looked, that looked stunning. It was very terrifying. And now to see that translate with Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, I think we got a solid maze on our hands, to be honest with you. No, I, I agree with you. I, again, um, you know, I'm just going to not reiterate, but it, it is one of those things where it's like they know how to pull uh, the best parts of, you know, a movie or a show. They know how to pull the, pull the best parts and. And I, I'm honestly, you know, like you were talking about, I, I don't know the, like I just called it the frozen demon. Um, right. Like I, I want to, I'm excited to see how they pull that off. Cause are they going to some kind of stilt walker or how they're going to do that? Cause you know, I, I just, that was more, that was the part I enjoyed about the movie was, you know, when this, you know, this frozen guy shows up and just freezing everyone to death. And I want to see how they pull that off and how, what effects are, maybe are we going to get like a cold area and you know you get that little chill and this guy just comes out and you know kind of towers over you so i'm really excited to see what they pull and then um i uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh we got the little the little marshmallow guys in this one right oh the little stay puff marshmallows yeah um, so, i'm excited to see how they pull that off obviously we right. saw something similar with krampus with the gingerbread exactly man. exactly so that's why i was just like I, you know, obviously, my, you know, we always refer to other houses or mazes and be like, oh, they did that over here. I wonder if they can. So I, that's the thing I thought of, too. Is like, oh, I know they had the little gingerbread guys in Krampus. So I wonder if they're going to do something similar with the Stay Puft Marshmallow guys. And, yeah. and so, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see that, too. So, I, you know, there's and then to the um, the the like the secret laboratory that they have there. I want to you know, I want to walk through there and and see the machine and, and all that stuff. So there, there are elements of the movie that i am excited to see in a house 
Although I didn't like the plot of the movie, and the, and the end of the day, I'm always going to be a Ghostbusters fan. You know, Ghostbusters oh, yeah. is just a, a beloved franchise, and uh, what they were able to accomplish in the '80s, and what they accomplished with Afterlife, and even the the ghost and the creativity that they brought to life with Frozen Empire. You know, there's something to love about all of them. Was Frozen Empire my favorite of the franchise? No. Would I watch it again? Probably not. But there are stuff to like about it. Like, there are things that I still walked out of it. Like, you know what? Even though I wasn't a huge fan of, like, the story and everything, the right. ghosts were really cool. It was great to see the old Ghostbusters back at it in uniform fighting again. You know, that, you know, that, like you said, that last 30 minutes is very, is a very exciting part of, of yeah. that film. So I'm excited to see, again, I, I think this might be another potential, much like Exorcist Believer was last year, where the maze might be better than the movie again. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent agree. I, I'm going to say it now. I one hundred percent agree with you that the maze will be better than the movie. <laughs> yeah, I think it will too. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of great stuff. You know, we have coming to Horror Nights already with yes. all the announcements we've gotten. It started with the Quiet Place. That's going to be a great uh, IP oh, to, sure. to see that. I know a lot of fans have been wanting to see that. And I know that it was something that they brought up at a 2019 panel at Midsummer Scream with Mike Aiello from Creative over in Orlando and John Murdy and Chris Williams. And someone had, you know, it's been such a fan requested maze, but the, the issue that always stopped them was how do you bring that to life? They figured out a way, and I cannot wait to see that this year, especially with them using sign language and um, to really play with the audio of this maze to really give you and immerse you into that world. So that should be really right. fun. Um, oh, for sure. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we got Monsteros coming. Uh, the the Nightmares of Latin America, the sequel to Monsteros. That should be a lot of fun. New uh, and familiar faces returning. Um, so I'm excited to see where that next um, chapter of the story takes us. I mean, Monsteros 1, hands down, was probably in the top three for me last year. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think, I mean, it, for me, uh, Monsteros was either... And it, it could it could switch back and forth, but it was always these two. It's either The Last of Us number one and Monstros number two, or you know swap them out. For me, it was just like one or the other. It just how I felt, you know, kind of like well, you know, this you know I like really like this, or in The Last of Us I really like this. So, but yeah, for sure, the top three, uh, top three for me. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And then we got a new one coming over that's an original that Orlando has done a take on. Now Murdy is doing his own spin on it with the same yeah. name. Uh, uh, with the kind of extended title, and this will be the uh, California version of Dead Exposure, Death Valley. Uh, there's a lot of who knows what we can see in this one. If we're doing like an Area 51 kind of thing, we can see yeah. a, abundance of things. But from the concept art that we got so far, it looks like kind of like a zombie super soldier army that they're working on secretly, and it got loose, and we're about to see the chaos unfold in this bunker. Um, we have seen them pull off desert scenes before with Stranger yeah. Things, uh, so that is there. That could work. Um, I'm excited to see what they pull off with this maze, what we're going to see in this maze beyond maybe just zombies. We might even see aliens. We might even see stuff we're not even supposed to see. Yeah. Um, the, the possibilities are endless with this one. I had heard very good things about the one in Orlando, so I'm excited to see what John Murdy pulls off. And potentially saying now with any of these mazes that we've gotten announced houses um which one is likely to get the behind the scenes treatment at midsummer screams panel Ooh man um i'm thinking monstros out of all of them to be honest you know you. what you, you, oh uh, yeah i think you're right i think you know that that house is kind of and we know you know, you know murdy puts his heart into all these houses but i feel like the monster the you know the universal monster houses and these like original like kind of lore houses he really kind of you know gets in there and, and digs deep and, and kind of gives us really like in-depth behind the scenes uh information regarding these houses so uh yeah i think i think monster Rose is probably going to be the one that he kind of digs into at midsummer scream you know kind of giving us the you know the the lore of each uh of each each monster and and you know where it comes from where the 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 origins drive from and now and how they build these well how they're gonna build these uh these characters and bring them to life in the house so yeah i think monster Rose probably uh is the best bet on what we're gonna get from midsummer scream 
Yeah, no, no doubt. And and not to mention, we're probably going to get an announcement there as yeah. well. We usually do every Midsummer Scream. Um, so announcement behind the scenes. Uh, I, I can even see him doing a behind the scenes of Dead Exposure, too, because to give us a little bit backstory and lore of what we're going to expect, uh, you know, seeing that. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I see. Um, I see. Uh, obviously a behind the scenes of, of a house but i think he's probably going to do you say announcements i think uh maybe a new scare zone i know there's going to be a scare zone attached to monstros so yeah um i don't know if he's gonna like go more into depth on that scare zone or you know bring just completely like oh you know we're gonna this is what we're gonna do because and what it looks like too is is and it, you know murdy's kind of done this uh and we've seen this for a while where he kind of like um sets up scare zones to see if they work and as possible future houses for us so who knows we're gonna what we're gonna get as far as maybe a new scare zone where they're gonna put it you know is it gonna go behind monstros and is it gonna be some kind of another lore or what's gonna go on with that so you know that that's always exciting too because he does i think he um what he had, i remember him one that just stuck out in my head was like when he they announced when he announced like the the scream queens that yeah. was uh, that was really cool. Like, oh, it's cool. It's like all these, uh, you know, like the different, you know, kind of takes on, you know, not the Wolf Man, but the Wolf Woman and all that stuff. So uh, he always he always brings really good announcements uh, come Midsummer Scream. No, 100 percent. And I'm looking forward to that panel. You know, that panel is going to be a huge panel. Uh, it was last year. I think they yeah. got to the point where they had to, like, turn people away because they were running out of space in yeah, there. It, so that's it's, it. It's it it packed. It does. And and. <laughs> You know, I don't know if you've been, obviously, I, I'm assuming you've been keeping up to date with Midsummer Scream. I do see you post a lot yeah. on, on Instagram and stuff. But, you know, that weekend alone, I mean, the theme parks and the, the it's going to be oh, a yeah. busy weekend, man. I mean, panel to panel, back to back to back. I mean, it always is for us. You, um, you legit, you like legit, it, it's, I feel like the the biggest year as far as panel wise for Midsummer. I mean, you know fright fest you got dark harbor coming back you know um 13th floor is still still doing their thing mm -hmm. and 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 you know obviously hhn and knots is you know knots is there again so it's just like all the and then you got you know the the i forgot what the like the you know um, like the kind of smaller the smaller haunts like their panel yeah and, you know, it's just it, it's it's it, it's a big year. It's, it's a big year. It's gonna be a nuts year, and I know you and I have already started talking about wanting to do certain haunts opening yeah. night together. Uh, I know we've already started discussing some Midsummer Scream plans of of that, and you know we're already starting to the, getting the gears rolling here at the Nights yeah, of Horror. You know, and, up, ramping up, and we know what what kind of a busy weekend we have. We're gonna have a lot of new toys to play with, uh, as far as <laughs> you know, with the camera stuff goes. So I'm excited for that. Got the new wireless road mics. I know you have a set, so yeah. I mean, I, I think Maze walkthroughs in the hall of shadow gonna be a little bit more funnier this year yeah. <laughs> um you know you'll, you'll have at least four wireless mics hooked up to somebody so <laughs> it will probably be me hayes rob and sammy all reacting <laughs> it's gonna be great uh be you know awesome. we're gonna have a lot of fun <laughs> and i think it's perfect because like all four of us can have camera or mics and literally be so fun just to kind of grab what we can over the weekend but yeah i oh, mean yeah, there's gonna sure. be you know, there's so much to look forward to this haunt season. And, you know, you brought up Dark Harbor. Now, uh, part of today's discussion I wanted to get into was, you know, I wanted to catch up with you on your thoughts of, right. of a lot of these haunts returning, a lot of announcements going on. Dark Harbor, you know, I don't think you and I really much had the opportunity to actually sit down and really talk about and the talk return about of it, yeah. Dark Harbor. Um, and that's huge. You know, Dark Harbor coming back this year was a shocker. You were at the announcement event for that. Uh, talk to me about how that was, being in that room and kind of getting the excitement of Dark Did you know that this was going to be for Dark Harbor, or they just kind of invited no. you guys out and they just surprised you? Yeah, no, it, it was it, – they didn't mention anything about Dark Harbor or anything like that. And, and you know, I was there um, – with a few buddies and uh i mean you know john uh from the hotline and and uh nico from entertainment connection we were kind of hanging out there and you know there was there was a lot of people i i at least in my opinion i feel like there's a lot of people and we were just all kind of like you know what why because they you know the announcement they gave us was kind of like um for a spooky event you know coming you know this haunt season and they didn't really 
reference to anything. So we're just kind of like, well, you know, maybe they're going to do something. Um, maybe Shacktober year three, a lot of people thought maybe, huh? Well, well we, we were we were thinking, because we were thinking something like a variation of Dark Harbor, almost like, and we were joking around saying like, oh, like, uh, you know, Dark Pier, or, you know, just kind of like, or, you know, the Foggy Pier, just, you know, throwing out, just shooting ideas, like, because we weren't thinking like, we, we were all... It was in the back of her head, but I don't think anyone wanted to physically say. Dark I would have been Harbor. the one guy. I'm like, it's gonna be. Yeah, fun. it's yeah. Dark Harbor, bro. It's gotta be well, Dark I think, Harbor. I, I think none of us wanted to jinx it. We all were hoping for it, and none of us wanted to be like the one big. Oh, it's Dark Harbor, and then everyone be like, you think so? And then it's like, oh, it's not. But you know, going into there, and, and you know, just it, it, for we're, the first thing, aside from the spooky aspect of it, it was really cool to see like the like the and i don't know you know forgive me i don't know their names and i you know i just know they were like representatives of like the city of long beach you know like council people right and and, and the mayor and stuff like that were there and it was just like oh this is when we when we saw them we were like oh this is kind of a this is a, a big deal so you know then they, they, we, we sat down and uh i don't know if you you've heard or not from other people but like they started to play a video and I watched no, I watched everything. I think you had footage that you recorded too and stuff. Yeah, and there was I watched no, it all. There was no audio on the first go round, but you could see like the fog immersing and you saw like a character and everyone was just like, What? And then they had stopped the video. And so we we're like, Oh man. It was like how we started the show. There was just no <laughs> yeah, audio. Yeah, no you know? audio. <laughs> exactly. So we were all just like, wait, what are they messing with us? Because we all knew, like, okay, that, that looks like a character from Dark Harbor. Who is it? Because it was still very foggy. Right. And so then, you know, they play the video with audio, and then there it is. You know, Dark Harbor's returning. And and we were just like, it was just like goosebumps were, like, you know, on my arm. Yeah. I was just like, I had goosebumps. It was exciting. You know, because I only went to Dark Harbor uh, in 2019, and that was, you know, then obviously what happened after that. Right. We, we will not speak of yeah but so so you know and then and then they you know they didn't come back and it was shacktoberfest you know thank you shacktoberfest for coming and, and filling in a void but but you know it was just exciting because i it almost was like a new haunt like it was like oh like what? what what's going on so the room was it was there was an electricity in the room everyone was excited we were all just kind of like we couldn't believe it we we're all hyped up it was just like you know we had to like calm down so we could hear the video and it, but it was overall it was it was an awesome awesome experience just to yeah. be on the Queen Mary and you know kind of see them announce like hey like Dark Harbor's coming back and you know this is what it's called and and you know they they let us know like oh you know announcements will come in the coming weeks you know we're gonna have you know a panel here and, and this is what's gonna happen but we'll you're gonna get announcements so we're like uh, that's that's that. It was, it was exciting. It was exciting. Yeah, it's, it, you know, I was happy for you to, to see you there. I'm like, yeah, he belongs there. You know, he belongs there. And you know, you know what? And, and, and it was, it was just like, I mean, you know, our buddy Scott, you know, yep. he couldn't make it out there. And, and he was just like, Hey, can you cover it for me? And, and, you know, he had sent me like the, the email that he had got and stuff. And, and I was just like, you know, it didn't say anything what it was. And, I was just like, what's like, what's going on, dude? He's like, I honestly don't know. Like, it it could be anything. Like, you know, if you can go, I was like, yeah, I, I got you, I got you, whatever. So, so you know, and and all that happened. So it was just, it was super exciting. I was, yeah. you know, I was glad to be there. I was, I just, and, and you know this, and I know you always, you're always telling me the opposite of what I say, but I just, you know, I, I felt like I didn't belong there. I was like, man, like this is, this is just why. I'm like, gonna tell you. You've seen you've seen me like you've seen me when I'm just at these places with you or next to you or next to other people. I'm just like, like, what? like, how did I how did I get here? I'm going to tell I'm going to tell you the exact same thing. Thomas from TLAB told me the very first time I went to my first media event, which was Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. OK, um, I said the same thing. I don't feel like I belong here. I, I don't yeah. feel like I'm big enough to belong here. And Thomas pulled me aside, and he told me, he goes, if you come in with that attitude and you you, you think that way, yeah, yeah your mentality is going to be that. But let me tell you this. You have more of a right to be here than anyone else does. He goes, this proves to you that you've worked your ass off to get here, just like everyone else did. I was yeah. So, like, he's, like, just taking the moment and enjoy it. And yeah. that's exactly what it was, was – I, 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 and I always bring this up. I, I will always be forever grateful for Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. I think that's why I'm super excited that it's coming back 
because they were the first ones to give us a chance to cover something, a haunt, a professional haunt actually gave us the opportunity to go out, yeah. cover the event and, and, and have a great time. And we did. And so much so that I, I loved that experience so much. I actually ended up buying tickets to go back because I wanted to see it more, yeah. you know, and it was such, it's such an amazing haunt. I'm so excited that it's returning. We know so many people that have contributed to that over the years uh, oh, yeah, and sure. that helped sure. bring that to haunt to life. I hope we see them back. Um, and I can't wait to see what Dark Harbor holds for the future of its return. Now, we do know for sure Scary Mary is returning so far. We know Graceful Gale is returning. Yeah, Graceful Gale. Uh, Lullaby has gotten announced for a maze. Uh, which is going to be more of a rebooted kind of thing. So my next question to you now, now we got the kind of positives out. I want to get real with okay. you for a second. Okay, let's go. Let's go. The 13th floor entertainment curse is what I like to call it. <laughs> Ooh, the curse. Okay. Haunted Hayride in 2019 was the first reboot and the first time that 13th floor actually partnered with, um, I forget who, but to bring more of a budget and more... Uh, awareness to it. Hayride was already kind okay. of blowing up and everything. They take okay. over 2019 and they, they rebrand it. They create this whole new immersive story of Midnight Falls. Right. It was at the old uh, LA Zoo spot. Great spot. Uh, great 2019. 2020 happens. We still got something. We got right. the, the drive-in experience, which, drive I, you know, for, for COVID, that was cool. That was fun. Right. Um, 2021, we return. Much bigger location. Not as good. 2022. Okay. 23. I did see a little bit of an increase that actually made me go like, holy shit. Okay. There's a little bit. It's gotten a little bit better this year. And that was due to uh, I felt like cast felt it felt like cast had a little bit more freedom in 20, 2023. Okay. Okay. Now, s s See, I did, unfortunately just scheduling wise, I didn't get a get a chance to get out there last year. Right, and I really, I it just bummed me out because I knew people who were working there, and 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 I want, you know, it's one of those things where it's like we know we've gone to we've gone to so many events that we know a lot of people who work at different events, and we always want to like go support them and 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 you know just be there and, and right. you know get footage of them, and because you know these are our, our friends and we want to support them just the way they support us. Um, and it just bummed me out. I couldn't get out there last year. So I, every, I did watch walkthroughs. I did watch, you know, videos and different different people's blogs and stuff. So I did get to see a lot of the event, um, you know, through through YouTube. Uh, and, and it did, uh, at least from my part and what I I saw, I feel like there was an improvement from 2022 to 2023. So, you know, and, and I'm just basing this off of, like, what I saw on videos like oh well oh they got to do this or or you know i saw that you know maybe they're a little more freedom in this area or you know the how the mazes you know kind of look like this or they brought this maze so you know i will agree just based off of what i saw on on you know with my eyes as far as the videos that people put out so um but but yeah i, I don't know i don't know i mean as far as first-hand experience i can't uh, confirm nor deny whether 2023 was better than 2022. So the what worries me now is okay. Okay, Dark Harbor left in 2019. Right. Epic Epic Entertainment Group was the one that was putting it on. Plague Productions was the one coming in to build for them as outside contractors. Okay, 13th floor now is taking over Queen Mary's Dark Harbor. Okay, now from what it seems like. So far, based off the three announcements that we've gotten, I mean, obviously, if you watch the very first announcement video of the the event, just announcing it's returning, we saw a lot of familiar characters, and it looked like one new character. Yeah. Now we've gotten the official word that it's uh, we've gotten Scary Mary, we've gotten Graceful Gale, and we've gotten Lullaby. My question to you is, and I've asked this to a few people, and I like to just hear everyone's answer about it. How do you bring back Dark Harbor? Now it has been. About five years, four okay. years, you know, do you pick up where you left off and just bring everything back and just kind of put it on and be like, this is, we're just bringing it back for year one. Okay. It's going to be the same stuff. Um, 
but maybe a couple tweaks here and there. And that's okay. how you do year one coming back. And then you, for year two, after you kind of see how that year goes, then you start adding a new maze or changing up stuff. Or do you do a fresh reboot? And it, well, it seems like with Lullaby, they're bringing that back. So that's going to be a returning maze. But it seems like a new, darker story. Do you right. reboot the entire event and just take all those mazes and reboot them all? Okay, so so as a fan, as someone you know who goes to all these events... I want a completely new story. I want, you know, fresh everything. But I'm going to follow the rule that I gave everyone when we came out of 2020 is that I'm going to give everyone a year grace. So, so, and I'm going to apply that same rule to Dark Harbor. They've been gone for a while. And this is, this is also, I think, something that, that, um, not so much like oh we're gonna bring in new fans, but there are there are those people, those fans who kind of have come on after 2020, who are new fans to the haunt and who've never got to experience Dark Harbor. Right. So so I would say, you know, tweak some stuff, but for the most part, and I'm I'm saying this as as someone who's thinking like behind the scenes, budget wise, like if we have all the stuff and we can you know we can put on a good event, maybe it's not gonna be the best event we can put on, but it's going to be a solid event and we're not going to, you know, people are going to enjoy it. They're going to have a good time. Put on that event because you, you don't want to, you don't want to stretch yourself so thin as far as, you know, uh, cast and budget and, and just, you know, props and stuff. You don't want to feel like there's a, you're doing so much that it's just like, are we going to make money? Is this going to work? Are we trying too hard to, to, are we making the 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 cast work too hard? Are we are we stretching them too thin? I feel like bring back the mazes that you had. Maybe if you can do one maze, two new mazes, um, re add some stuff to existing mazes, and kind of but give us what you gave us in 2019. I'd be okay with that, just for the sole purpose of let them get back on their feet. Let them let them kind of you know take those steps step 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 until and then maybe next year they have a bigger budget we can do more things bring back you know maybe if they have let's just say you know for because i don't know how many mazes they're gonna have let's just say six mazes they have six mazes four mazes are returning two brand new mazes like you know that would be for next year so i'm i'm of the mindset like give them a year to kind of get on their feet and get because you know we have to remember yeah I, I know like, you know, there's companies that are going to step in and, you know, okay, we're going to do this, you know, 13th floor, we're going to, you know, we're a part of, we're going to, this is what we're doing. This is what we're, what we're doing over here. I just feel like give Dark Harbor some breathing room to kind of get the ball going. And then, you know, next year we'll have a little more expectations of them. So I, that's kind of my mindset. I don't know if people are going to be, if people are like, oh yeah, you know, just kind of let them, let them do their thing this year. And then next year. Or if they're just going to be like, oh, no, we want all new mazes this year, and we know Dark Harbor, and they can do this, and they can do that. So, I don't know. That's my mindset. I 100% uh, agree with that because, you know, it, it's, it's an, I think it's a well-loved event. I think when it went away, a lot of people were sad about it, so oh, much sure. so that I, I think because of the QM Slider group, they were the group that kind of helped keep the name and the you know everything alive with that uh, as right. far as Dark Harbor goes, and QM Sliders goes back before you know you know the ones who are in it today. It goes back years from you know the, as far back as the event's been. I'm excited, yeah. you know, to see uh, a slider show at another haunt again. That's going to be a lot of fun if they get to if they get to do that again. That was hopefully, what, hopefully, yeah. Dark Harbor was really big on that, so I'm hoping they bring that back. That could be a lot of fun. Um, and you know what? I don't know if you've ever gotten to see a Dark Harbor panel at Midsummer Scream, but if it's done right, right it is by far one of the funniest panels you will ever watch. <laughs> Probably like if if they bring out the captain. And the captain is improving with the actual production, like directors and everything. It's the funniest thing ever. There was one point where, like, they just like middle of the thing when he goes, "Well, it looks like we went off script this time," and he just like threw the <laughs> script away, and they just kind of went and did their own. Dark Harbor panels are a different vibe in the best way possible, and I am hoping that we get that vibe again, Brad. If you're listening, you probably already know the the answer. Maybe you don't yet, but I am hoping you come back. 
and and reprise the role of the captain because you are freaking amazing at it. You're hilarious as it, um, and those panels are just are amazing. But you know, a lot of things to come with Dark Harbor. Who knows what happens in the next couple of weeks? Um, you know, it was great. Uh, we never wanted to end. Decided to keep it going on the off season and even during the pandemic. Needed that Halloween fix. 100. percent uh, and it was because of, you know, the QM sliders that I think, you know, I, I'd like to say, in my opinion, I would think because the name and, you know, how much publicity they've put out within the last couple of years of going to events, you know, and, and whatnot, uh, I would think it was because of that, that kind of kept that name alive, that kept the fans loving this event, who love this event, who, who, who go to this event on my own girlfriend. This was the only haunt she ever went to. Until she met me, and then I started taking her to Horror Nights. I started taking her to Not Scary <laughs> Farm. Like, but it tells you that she loved Dark Harbor so much. She was there practically every night of the season, every weekend, you know. And it, and that's how much this haunt meant to a lot of people, you know. And and I got to go two or three times in 2019, and that shows you how much I enjoyed it. You know what I mean? It, it was. It's like you said, this haunt is different. It's unique. It doesn't, you know, with the history of the boat, you know, that right, I think drives yeah. a lot in a lot of the the traction to this haunt because of the the haunted history. And even, you know, you, you talked about that press event you were at, you know, the, the mayor of Long Beach had said in that press event, this has driven uh, tourists to come in and it has brought right. in a lot of money to the city of Long Beach over the years that they've had, you know, in the month of October, September, people come out from different states because they want to visit Dark Harbor. Right. Um, right. So, you know, Dark Harbor has uh, had a very positive effect on the city of Long Beach and the fan base has been as loud and as strong as ever. I remember back in 2021 at Awaken the Spirits when they did a Queen Mary panel, that place was packed. You know, a lot of people were hoping to get some news about it. We never got yeah. any news about it, but it was yeah. still a great panel and it was a packed panel. And it shows you right there that the fan base never gave up on this haunt. Fast forward to 2024, and now we got the resurrection of Dark Harbor after what we thought was done for good now has returned and uh, is taking over back the Queen Mary again. Super stoked for that. I know you're stoked for that. It's it's going to be for a fun sure. one. It really is. Yeah, it, it, it's, and it's all, I mean, we geek out about these haunts and stuff like that. But you know what? At, you, know, just, you talking about that reminded me, like, at that event, like, it was cool to see like how much the ship meant to the city like we all know like oh that's the queen mary dark harbor and and you know we, the queen mary's been there for years and but it was it was cool to hear like them talk about like well you know this is what the queen mary means to the city of long beach it, it's not like we think like you know it's like you know we get like oh it's haunt like dark harbor but at the same time it's like that ship is so important as far as bringing people who don't live there to come and spend money and invest in the city of long beach and 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 that just makes me think like how important dark harbor was to the city of long beach because obviously they're bringing it back for fine you know financially it was a bonus for them but it just meant so much like people were coming from everywhere to 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 do this haunt there and to be on the boat and i mean they you know they have their ghost their ghost tours and, and stuff like that and where you could kind of tour the boat and you know even just go on it and walk around <clears throat> but like how cool is it to do like a haunt event on a haunted boat like it's that's just like it, it really is i mean yeah, I, it's I, crazy. I we got to go through we were lucky enough at shacktober last year to get a maze on the boat uh with the gray ghost that was really fucking cool I've always said the maze boats always felt scarier because you never knew what was watching you and what wasn't. <laughs> um, and just the, the part of, yeah, and, and I've talked to this about a lot of people who've worked there, but like there's certain parts where you're walking in some of those mazes on the boat where it just all of a sudden gets really fucking cold. And then yeah. it just, you know what I mean? And I know it's from coming from outside the breeze, but it's still just that eerie, it's eerie. feel. It's yeah. Eerie. yeah, it's eerie. It's, it's, it's eerie. just chilling, but... You know, I've gotten to do in the off season this past year. We 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 in December we got to stay on on the ship. It was an, cool. it was an amazing time. I highly recommend to do it at least once. Uh, it, it's it's a lot of fun to just browse that that ship in the middle of the night with no one on it, and it's it's pretty scary, but it's pretty cool. 
You know what? Uh, th- that night they had that event. Uh, you know, they kind of let us after it was over. They kind of let us just like free you know, roam. walk around. Yeah, yeah. kind of free roam. So you know, I, I went outside and I took some pictures and just was walking around. And I was like, man, this 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 place is beautiful, but at the same time, some it's of these creepy. hallways, some of these hallways, man. But this was yeah. one thing. One thing I wanted to say. One thing, and I know, I know it probably might not happen this year, but Dark Harbor. I I I have an amaze or a, I have an icon. I have an icon that I w- I was talking about with John and Nico, and I was like, there needs to be like a custodian or like a janitor icon for Dark Harbor because you know what? I think you and I need to go in Dark Harbor's office and have to originally we we have you and I have to write that yes, character because you yes. and I know the everyday struggles of that profession. Cause you, they, you know what the janitor would see on that boat as they're mopping, oh. you know, late at night. You know all the nonsense they would see. So you know, I'm you like, know, it's like need- that scene in the Breakfast Club. It's like I, I listen to your conversations. You guys <laughs> yeah. don't know it, but I do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the janitor. The janitor knows. Fuck. I've always said that the the janitors are like the Illuminati of the school. They secretly yeah. run it. They have the keys to the kingdom, and they, they know, know everything, everything. bro. Yeah, they do. They, know everything. they do. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> We seriously do, but I, I, I 100% agree. There could be a good story behind that. Yeah, or, like, what yeah. if it's, like, something like, um, you know, Universal Orlando, when I went for the 30th anniversary, they did a uh, a maze that was based off a detective, and it was supposed to be his okay. stories and everything, but, like, his stories were supposed to be books, and they came to life, but they were, like, scary horror stories, but they were, like, supposed to be Detective Noir style. One okay. of my favorite mazes, I think it was called, I, I forget what it was called, I think it was, like, un, Unearthed truth or untold truth i forget what it was called but it was probably one of my favorite mazes of of that year and a lot of people give me shit about it but i i love what i love (laughs) um imagine doing like it's modern day right and the custodian that's worked there for years is telling the stories of things that he's witnessed or accidents that he's had to clean up over the years that he's worked there imagine he's he's an older gentleman so i'd say he's been there for about 30 40 years so he's seen a lot of stuff in that span of time and you're just living through the horror stories that he writes in his journal as he's worked that you know that at, at, on the ship and it kind of ties go. into the lore of that would be kind of like your 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 icons anniversary type maze i don't they're not really celebrating an anniversary but you know what i mean like that'd be your collaboration yeah. maze of the entire event like all the ghost stories that you're gonna hear are all the stories that you already know of these icons. Scary Mary, yeah. Graceful Gale. You're going to see incidents that he saw while cleaning or things that happened, and then maybe include a brand new character that happened in more modern time. But I know with, with Dark Harbor, they kind of like to keep that that certain time period uh, that the ghosts are kind of just stuck in, yeah. the spirits that are just stuck in. So, you know, it would be cool to not only give something brand new but like create something brand new too i mean there's there's a lot of i mean i know it sounds like a dumb idea coming from two janitors (laughs) and we just (laughs) like to see our profession represented a little bit more excuse me but i i I think it could work no i i just i mean i was walking i was like walking like that chip and i was just like you know like it would be so cool to have like a janitor icon or custodian icon just being like because it is like like they're there, they're up late, they're cleaning stuff late, they're in the places that no one wants to be. They're 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 in the restrooms, they're in you know the boiler rooms, or you're sweeping up the hallways, and it's like, you know, what, like like the person who who cleaned up this place, all probably all the crazy stuff they saw or heard or or witnessed. It was, I was like, they they need to make a they need to make like a janitor icon. They need to do something, man. But I I think we're in for a very yes great yes. year of Dark Harbor. Cannot wait. Now, we're going to take a short music break. I got some new Mortalis for you guys. Uh, Mortalis, been on the channel before. Good friends of the channel. Uh, based out of La Puente, California. We both know that area very well, huh? Yes, huh, Robbie? we do. Yes, yes we, we do. do. My, weekend, my weekend home is, is in Baldwin Park. You know, Robbie's next door in El Monte. We're all good, bro. It's, we're all That's neighbors right. here. We're That's all neighbors right. here. Uh, Mortalis got a new single out. Uh, they got a new album coming out, I think, later this year. Uh, two singles have been released. Their latest single just dropped last week, entitled Profit. Uh, we're going to play that for you exclusively right here on Nights of Horror Radio. Uh, so don't go anywhere. We're going to play some more Talos right now. And then when we come back, we're going to get Rob's thoughts on Six Flags Fright Fest because we know Rob is the Six Flags guy of the Nights of Horror. He's been going 20-plus years. 
He's a veteran of the event. He knows. I'm old. I'm you're not old. old. You're just ex <laughs> you're experienced. <laughs> experienced. <laughs> uh, on top of that, we're going to be breaking down and reviewing the exclusive footage I filmed uh, last Saturday in Las Vegas for the brand new year-round Halloween Horror Nights Horror Unleashed. We're going to talk a little bit about that, compare it to the concept yeah. art, get everyone's thoughts about it. Uh, but uh, until then, enjoy some Mortalis and their newest single, Profit.
Welcome back to Nights of Horror Radio. Big shout out to Mortalis for their new single, Profit, available on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you can listen to your music. Mortalis have been there with us. Uh, we still keep in touch. Uh, very big fans of the music. Yet to see them live, though. I need to see them live. I love the sound of the music, and I can't wait to see uh, what they come out with with this with this next album. But Rob, Six Flags, man, last week just hit us in a storm of announcements, bro. And I, I know that if there was one person that was more excited about it than me, it was going to be you, the biggest the biggest Fright Fest fan I know. Fright Fest Extreme is what they're calling it this season. First off, name change. I'm all for it, man. It seems like they're taking Fright Fest to a whole new level we have not seen before. We got a little taste of it last season. Now we're getting full-blown investment into this season. Yeah. Yeah. Love Nico. I love Nico. Oh, hold on. Rob is muted. Unmuted. Uh, unmuted Great. now. We were talking about okay. Unmuted. So any for anyone that missed it, it's because I gotta do some muting because when we play music, then you'll hear us. I don't want you to have to hear us while you're listening to the music. But Rob was basically saying how uh, he was telling Nico. Basically, that he's been talking about or Six Flags doing something like this for years now. Rob, go ahead and pick up where you <laughs> left off. We're still so, working technical <laughs> difficulties here. Yeah, there you go. So, anyway, anyways, again, I'll, I'll repeat it. It's not my idea, but the way uh, Nico was saying how um, you know with the merger and everything, and maybe Which this actually, is like, I'm sorry, to cut you off real no, quick. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Mooch just said that went into effect today. Right, exa exactly. So with this whole merger of, of Cedar Fair and Six Flags and and this, you know, and I know it's something subtle like Six Flags Extreme, but, you know, maybe this is it was something to kind of like let people know, like, you know, with such a huge announcement, like it's not just Six Flags anymore. It's Six Flags Extreme. And this is kind of going to be something to look forward to with you know these huge announcement you know this huge announcement that that they made so i was like you know that kind of I, I like that because it does say like we've something's different about six flags it's not the same old six flags that you're used to it, it's going to be different so i was like yeah that makes sense that makes sense i wanted to go so bad last year for the 30th didn't make get the opportunity to go out there last year um but it looked like a lot of fun we're uh, going out there this year. We are. Now, that's the story I was about to, to tell the audience. For those who've been watching Nights of Horror for a while, I believe our first year was 21 or was it 22? Was it 21? 21. 21. 21 Rob and I uh, had the opportunity. We were uh, given, uh, we got some discounted tickets from a mutual friend. Uh, yeah. And we, uh, Rob hooked it up that night and bought us the maze passes. And so I got to experience Fright Fest at its fullest in 2021 with Rob uh, right there by my side. And what better person to experience for the first time a haunt with than someone who's been going to said haunt for now over 20 years. And it is just to see it in Rob's eyes, man. <laughs> it's it's and I, and I know you keep making the face when I say the number, but... <laughs> I, I, you know, I mean, that's just, it, it is what it is. You know, you yeah. have the most experience when it comes to this haunt. So I knew when this news dropped that you were going to be the most excited about it because you continue oh, to visit every single year, no matter what it is. And I know you have a fun time in the scare zones to take a lot of photos. Um, you've gotten to know a lot of the monsters there. You guys have gotten to interview one on Haunt Talk. Um, yes. And, you know, we've gotten to interview a bunch over here on Nights of Horror. Um, and it's been a, a, just a blast to kind of build that relationship with uh, a lot of the, the amazing talent over there at Six Flags. Um, you know, to see what they announced this year, you know, Stranger Things, Army of the Dead, um, Saw Anniversary. I mean, they're covering all 20, 20 years of Saw, man. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah, an that's extensive crazy. history. That's crazy. You know, so that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. The Conjuring Universe featuring the Annabelle and the Nun. Uh, you know, that's going to be terrifying. I, I feel like I'm missing another one. 
Uh, Army of the Dead. I said Army of the Dead. Uh, uh, Stranger Trigger Things. Treat. Trigger Tree. Trigger Trigger I Trigger mean, treat. you know, we've seen just about all these properties, half of these properties at, at Halloween Horror Nights, you know, and to yeah. see what Six Flags is going to do. Now, what I did like about the press email that, that it really gave me good spirits about it is how much money they're actually going to be investing into these and how much quality and time they're going to take to be building these. Um, yeah, yeah. That, I will, was, that was... Oh, no, I was, I was sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say that was kind of like my concern, too, is like we don't just want the name. We want, you know, like... The quality. Some back, yeah, the quality, some backing behind it. Now, I've come out recently and said... I think the perfect place for Army of the Dead is where Aftermath was. Right, correct. Hundred percent. Like you are one hundred percent correct. That's where that's going. Like there's no other if you want to replicate that post apocalyptic Vegas, you already have all those sets right there in Aftermath. Right. That's all where you, you put do, that. Just throw like Give me like Vegas, five Dave Batistas <laughs> and we're good to go. Like I need some big motherfuckers that can play the Dave Batista role. You know, I need to see a power bomb off the damn flamethrower into the car. Like there you go. We got to see that was, it. That was the, uh, that area was the old Batman stunt show, right? Yes. So, so we, we get, we could see some stunts in there. Let's see some yeah, stunts. We could do it. Some like Batista bungee. out of nowhere, bro. Yeah, some bungee work in there. They, yeah. they have the space for a it. A spear here and there, you know? We'll yeah. Be okay. I think it's doable. Yeah, it's doable. I, I, be, I believe so. You believe. So. <laughs> you believe. <laughs> believe. Um, no, I, I think Army of the Dead is perfect. I, I, I actually got to, uh, I, I don't know if you remember this, but when it came out, it had a limited theatrical run. I think you actually yeah. went to go see it as well in theaters. Yes. yes. Um, and I as well got to see it in IMAX. Uh, I love. I think Zack Snyder going back to his roots of the zombie genre was amazing. He did a great job with this film um, up until the very end of kind of like that that twist at the end, you know, that it was just such a good film from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, Batista showing out more of that dramatic side that he can pull out in a role, uh, which he got to show more of in, um, that M night Shyamalan movie about the, uh, the cabin. Um, Oh yeah. Cabin. In, was it cap? No, a cabin. In, I'm thinking no, cabin in the woods. uh, oh, fuck, I forgot what it was called, but it was such I a good movie. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. It was an awesome movie. It awesome was such movie. a good movie about the four horsemen, the apocalypse and everything. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and to see, so I can't wait to see Army. I think Army of the Dead had so many great scenes of the zombies, uh, so many different, I, it, there's, there's no telling what you can do. And that was the first, like I said, that was the first thing that I thought of when I read Army of the Dead. I'm like, that, it's already built. You just yeah, got to make it look sure. like more Vegas. That's all. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just dressing. That's, That's all, it, all is. it is. Just dressing. Dress it up. But yeah, that post-apocalyptic world of, of what Vegas looked like when it was surrounded and stuff. I mean, it's there. the 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 footprint is there. The skeleton is there. All we got to do is dress it, you know, and and it's it's good to go. You know what? What kind of just and I, I completely agree with you. That's you know when I was trying to figure out because that's as soon as I heard all these things, I'm just trying to figure out like, well, where are they going to put this? Where are they going to put that? But there was no like, there was no question. Army of the Dead. I was just like, oh, that well, that that's going where aftermath is. Like, that's not even like that's not even a thing. It's not so, even a question. Whole, yeah, hopefully it goes there because I don't want to. I don't want to be like that. They're like, oh, we're. I don't over here. unless they have a vision for it to be inside of a soundstage or a tent or something. I I think that's your best bet. You, you know, it's yeah. all it's all it's there. Got, you, yeah, you got a lot of space. You have again, it, it would be you really even don't even have to change the layout of of like the maze itself. Like you just dress it up and you know you're good to go. Dude, first half of the maze, you're going into Vegas. You know, going through all that. Once you get into that police building, we can easily turn it into the casino of the vault they're trying to of yeah. trying to roll up. Yeah. Because that area where you make the corner kind of already looks voltish, so you it can kind of make yeah. that vault, and then the last half is the chaos that kind of ends after they rob the vault. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's it's there, dude. It's it's really there, and oh, for sure. I I think like you said, uh, and and this is like the honesty of it is like if they can pull off some stunt work. I know it's a little bit harder during haunt, but a bungee cord here and there that could help a lot, especially with how these zombies move and them jumping everywhere and them kind of being crazy the way they were. That could work in this maze, especially. I, I, I yeah, I think I think, and I, I mean, I'm not I'm not an expert. Uh, this is just me um, fanboying a little bit, but I think they can pull a lot, like you're saying, uh, like bungee, some bungee work. I think there's enough room in that area 
but throughout that entire uh entire that that maze that where they can put one uh stunt like bungee stunt person to do something over there or even if it's um uh I don't want to say like the bungee where like they run at you and they they kind of get pulled back. I don't know how that would work because that's typically like in a house kind of. I thing, like. But... I was thinking more of like the ones they used in Shadowlands. Okay. Yeah. 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 The that, jump down that ones. Perfect. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, that would be perfect. Make some platforms like, and then jump down and jump back up. Yeah, yeah, so, something like that. Like you know that that again, see the like, like that would go into putting a little more uh, money into into a house so you can. Do even if it's just one, it would be like because you like those bungee scares, especially if you're not expecting it. They're they're are, effective. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And we've never seen that in that haunted house, so I think throwing something like that in there, you know, the plat like you're saying, build a platform, kind of hide it a little bit. Maybe when you you know you're circling around like all the rubble and everything, and you kind of come out to like where the cages are, you have like one platform with the bungee character just jump out at you, you know, or maybe some fog and throw some fog in there. And, yeah. you know, they just throw a little money into that. And, you know, that's a good scare. It'll be a good scare. A hundred percent. Now, the one I want to focus on my, my attention down next is one that I think Six Flags has the opportunity to win a lot of fans over with. Okay. Stranger okay. Things. All right. Now, All right. we've already seen what Horror Nights can pull off. We've seen it multiple times. I think we've seen it about three times now. We've seen, yeah, we've yes, seen we a Stranger have. Things maze for them. And they, for what they've given us, have given us some amazing memories with the Stranger Things property. Okay. Uh, okay. In my opinion. Um, right. However, I wore today's shirt for a reason. Oh, I see where you're going there. I see where you're going. Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood did not give us the Eddie Munson trailer scene. Right. If Six Flags wants to win the hot scene over here in SoCal very much, you put that scene inside this year's maze. Oh, if if, the, if that scene is in the maze, like I, <laughs> I'll cry. I, think, I probably will cry. <laughs> I think if you walk it, if you walk into this haunted house, and all you see is is Eddie and Dustin playing his guitar, yeah, and Dustin on the RV playing the guitar. And then you walk out, and that's the end of the house. People will be like, you know what? I wouldn't even it be mad if that was the facade was, of the house. It was short, but it was worth it. I wouldn't even <laughs> be mad if that was the facade of the house. Yeah, even that, even that. that you know would what be I mean? So cool. Like that that if that's so cool. what I'm entering to start the maze off, I'm. I don't even think I'll go. I'm just gonna stand out there all night and watch that. Be like, oh no, go ahead, keep going. Yeah, no, I'm just you, gonna you, stay you, right you, here. I'm yeah, just gonna film go this all night, me. twenty-four you hour. We're doing 24-hour yeah, uh, live cam all night. <laughs> you can go in front of me. I'm just here. I'm just here. No, but I, I think if you're going to win over the fans with Stranger Things, especially because it looks like they're going to be touching on, on Season 4 with the shots of Vecna and everything, you got to bring this one alive. Six Flags, I said it last week, the ball is in your court. If you want to win the fans over with this maze because they know you're going to – you know – your diehards are going to walk in there being like, Horror Nights already did this. Let's see how they can do it. They're going to be comparing your maze. I can promise you that right now. And I'm not telling you that to be an asshole. I'm telling you that as constructive criticism. They are going to be comparing your maze. And if you want to win everyone over, your whole maze can be terrible. But if you have that <laughs> one scene in there, I guarantee you people are going to love that maze specifically just for that one scene. I, I, think, I don't think I it's think going to be a terrible maze. I'm just saying... If they yeah, wanted yeah, no, to be no. lazy, they could make it the worst thing ever and put all their budget into that one scene, and I guarantee you people will still walk out loving it. I think that they, they the as far as the behind the scenes, the people in charge of Six Flags, they, they're they fans too. Just like us, they're fans. They go to other events, and they I feel like they've heard the complaint that we had with Horror Nights. And don't get me wrong, I love Horror Nights. I think they do a lot of good things. They I still think that uh, maze was fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah, no. Like I, regardless, I, it was a great maze. The only issue I had with um the the Stranger Things mazes they was I think the second one the that they did. Yeah, I had more issues with that, and but still I you know I found some stuff I'm, to enjoy about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I went through there I'm like oh you know this was cool, this was cool, but you know I not the not the best one I've seen. But right. but they've I feel like they've heard the complaints, they've heard the gripes or issues and one thing i will say and i'll give six flags a lot of credit for because 
because of what they did with um, the Saw House at Fright Fest come the Saw House at, at Screen Break. There were some issues that were addressed as far as the fans, you know, vocalizing issues that they had with the Saw House. And I think come Screen Break, they addressed some of those issues. So I feel like that's showing that, okay, Six Flags listens. Maybe, maybe budget-wise, they can't do everything that we're asking for. But we know that they listen and they address some of the issues. So I'm going to take that as evidence to say that they've heard the complaints when HHN had uh, Stranger Things. And I feel like they're going to, maybe not everything they're going to address, but I feel like that's one thing where they're like, you know what, they, at HHN, they didn't get this. We want to give it to them here. I I agree, and I think that – now, I can't make that comparison for Fright Fest and Screen Break. I did go to Screen Break this year. Okay, um, okay. And I did go through Saw, and I will be 100% honest. Okay. And I, I, sh- and I, and I tried it, and I, and I kept telling myself going in, walking towards this maze, that I wasn't going to do this, but I ended up doing it anyway, and I, and I kind of wish I didn't. I went into the mentality thinking Halloween Horror Nights IPs. Okay, you, okay. I, I and I that's said it, na- but that's natural. That's kind of that's it kinda is natural. It, it, I'm sure, and I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna, taking the words out of your mouth, but I feel like I feel like knowing you uh, the way I do, yeah, that's a natural reaction when you're going through it. But I'm sure, and you're gonna probably mention it. There was a change of heart or a change of mind uh, when you got to think actually think about it, right? So. I don't know. I went. We went pretty late in the season for Scream Break. I think we went okay. like second or third last to the last weekend. Okay. So I don't know if one, I just had a bad run through, or two, a lot of people dropped out since then. Okay. But it felt like there were only two people playing the pig, and it felt mm. like those same two people were. And, and I'm not talking shit about any of the actors that were in there because I will be honest, if there was as little talent as I saw in there and they were doing running back and forth everywhere to guarantee that we got to scare almost every single room, hats off to you because that is some fucking commitment and no one will tell you this to your face. I don't think you'll ever hear it from a guest, but you'll hear it from me. I appreciate the fuck out of you if you're doing that to give me the best experience to walk through this maze and the story that you're trying to tell. And that's what I felt happen in this maze when I walked through it. Okay. Um, okay. It just felt like there weren't a lot of people in it. Um, and it felt... I, I, I will say this. I, I thought the set designs were fucking amazing. They, okay. did, they did a very good job at set dressing. Um... Again, I think just me going in with that mindset of fucking Horror Nights and then coming out of like, well, that wasn't like Horror Nights, but I'm like, I shouldn't have went in and done that mindset because I knew it wasn't going to be like Horror Nights. This is someone out, you know, you, you for years you've only, I mean, Knott's did it a few times with IPs, but like you've only ever seen Halloween Horror Nights do the IPs. So it's really hard to compare something you know, that's not Horror Nights when it comes to IPs. You know what I mean? It's like right. the only other event that I think that's done that, and it was like a one, two-year thing, was Horror Made Here with Warner Brothers. Um, okay. So that's why I think for me, I kind of was like, eh, about Saw. Okay. Condemned House Party was great. I love that one. Uh, and that's just an original, so I think that was cool. I was a little sad that took away Volt 666 initiation yeah. that was a fun that that, that that was a fun one last year for me yeah, it was fun it was fun i think you could have upped it to three mazes this year and you still would have had a great turnout well I, the only reason i think i mean now like i'm thinking like they didn't use the building for vault 666 is maybe they're gutting it preparing it yeah they're gutting it for maybe they're gonna use it for something else you know so i would so. imagine they're gonna use it for all these these different mazes but you're right I yeah. didn't even, now looking at that kind of the situation that we are in now hearing these announcements that makes so much more sense they even yeah. i think went as far as taking down the logo from the building too um Wait. oh yeah, yeah yeah uh for the on you're talking about the vault 66 yeah, right? yeah 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 so like that begs the question what original mazes stay you think condemn still stays do you think um like Here, what still stays? That's it's tough because okay, so and you you read the the press release, right? It only yeah, and I only saw the mazes that I saw. I don't know if they're still going to announce any more stuff at midsummer. 
So I don't know. So and I I think they are. I, I've talked to a couple people who who are there, and they they had said like you know midsummer, just be prepared. It's not a panel you want to miss. So I said okay, but but I'm going off of like the what the press release said, and it said, and it it kind of tricked me a little bit. But then I reread it. But it's like twenty houses and scare zones, right? So I'm thinking like you know there's five five six scare zones maybe are they adding another scare zone even if they had two scare zones that's still like you know that's like what seven scare zones that means there's going to be what 13 houses so so is you were still the way it's kind of in my head the way it kind of plays out you know with the I'm just like the addition and subtraction right. it's like okay it sounds like we're keeping some of those houses where are these other ip houses going to go so it's it just like you know you know and then i start like oh well are they going to get rid of willoughby's and and i was thinking trick-or-treat for willoughby's but then or you know, conjuring people, yeah yeah well well the i think the conjuring is going to stay um uh in the arcade that they had it in because it's just a good it, i think it was a solid it was a solid area for that for that house and you know, if they're gonna more focal, you know, focal the the nun and Annabelle, and just kind of make it like their house with sprinkle some of the other Warrens, you know, artifacts in there. I think that would work fine because uh, that house is really. I thought that house is really really good um, going through it, and just the scares that they had in there were really good. So if we're gonna throw Annabelle and the nun in there, I'm like, oh, okay, like I could see them doing it there, and it's staying in the same spot. The only thing is, I was thinking like they would move saw which they're not going to they're probably going to leave it there and put saw where truth or dare is because just the warehouse and the, the massive size of it and if it can gonna, honestly look like a facade to jigsaw's warehouse right and if they're going to go 20 years and you know kind of take the the i'm assuming the best kills or best traps from saw like you know you want to give it a little more room from the vault put, of saw exactly exactly so and then you know you got the vault 666 and and uh and and but i think i think we are going to keep a condemned house party i don't know if it's going to stay house party i hope it just goes back to condemned because i would prefer them to keep house party at screen break and switch it back to condemned just condemned uh, well to my understanding last for for 30th they brought in condemned and they even had the margarita character inside of the maze too right yeah yeah but it, it wasn't was... played by our our good friend no. um yeah. it, it was played by someone else because uh our friend m was getting to play a little bit in uh the devil's triangle yes um, yes so uh that was uh you know i mean just to see them do that and just show how popular that character got over screen break and now it's starting right. to bleed into fright fest you know and i don't know dude there's just so much happening this there year is. at six there Flags. Is. i mean you got all these ips trick-or-treat still you know and and all that with, so with trick-or-treat here's here's the thing with trick-or-treat and this is what i'm saying they might have that trick-or-treat i'm thinking is going to be a new scare zone where they're going to put it i don't know because the way it was worded exile hill press, probably and, maybe Maybe I don't know, but Exile Hill so like that's the Exile ghost. Hill. That's the ghost town of, of Six Flags. Yeah, it, it, you know I know it's a small area, but it's still that's like Exile Hill. I, I feel like they're gonna put it somewhere else, so a different, different. Um, maybe like you know how you go past, uh, right before you go past um, uh, Goliath, where mm -hmm. like the the little Looney Tune areas. Right. I think maybe right there they might that might be a trick or treat area. Okay. Just just because. The way they worded it in the press release was that it, it was going to be like a candy lane kind of thing. They didn't really mention like a house, so I'm thinking maybe that's a new scare zone. I could be wrong. Again, I'm kind of like how uh, Orlando did when they first did Trick or Treat. They did it as a scare zone, yeah, which was really good. They actually brought a lot of the most iconic scenes to life, and then had a lot of the most iconic characters running around the scare zone. Um, but you do something like that, and you have that whole little area. Which I know they utilized a little bit, uh, like two years ago, and I think they utilized it again last year as like their carn, carn evil kind of hell, oh, carn of hell, carn of hell, yeah, hell, yeah. Uh, and I remember that was a cool little expansion that year that they did that, um, and then just to see, of course, uh, 
you know, during screen break, the vampires took over the that little corner over there, which I thought was a really good uh, addition oh, yeah. to them. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. There's just so much that you can do. with, And it's such a big park that they can really expand more things. Um, you know, I mean, and, and for example, they're doing they're doing a lot of new things with Six Flags. Not only if you're just a Haunt fan, but like as of right now, they're doing that whole DC celebration thing. Yeah. And yeah, me being a fucking, cool. D, you, you're a DC fan, I'm a DC fan, you know, just to see that happen you know you never thought you'd see a theme park actually do that i mean you know you, you got disney that does it with marvel over at avengers campus now you got the dc area doing a dc kind of event it looks a lot of fun i've seen so many videos i know you filmed a lot of videos for that uh you got the harley quinn gang you got the joker yeah. gang you got all of, it seems like a lot of the most popular batman's rogues uh gallery robin's there batgirl's there batman's there superman's there is wonder woman there I'm Wonder Woman is there. Yeah, Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman is there. Is there. Yeah, so she you, is got, there. you got the big three there at least. And uh, I mean, I, I think that's, that's as a fan, that's awesome. AJ, uh, shout out to AJ. <laughs> I've been seeing him. I thought he was playing Harvey Dent this whole time. He's not. <laughs> he's just playing a mayor of, uh, he's he's the the mayor, mayor of he's Gotham. He's the mayor of Gotham. He's the mayor of Gotham. Yes, yes. I mean, there's been a few mayors of Gotham, so I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's trying to clean up. He's trying to clean up the streets of Gotham. So, so he's Harvey good, Dent. Good luck to him. He's good Harvey luck. Dent. He, <laughs> pretty pretty much you know what when we were there i was like i i was i was chatting with the mayor chatting and, with the mayor uh, yeah i was chatting with the mayor and uh i was like you know what you look very like superman you know i was like you you know, kind of your shoulders and he's like oh no 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 i'm you know i'm, I'm just the mayor <laughs> I mean, we had a nice little little interaction well, you thought he was superman maybe huh? he's just, like, i, I was, th I was thinking i was like yeah are you wearing your disguise or because you'd never seen this... superman and the mayor in one one place Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, saying, so, but it was it was uh, it, it it's fun over there. You're right. Six Flags is doing some really cool stuff, especially like you know they got their tasting events. They have you know their hall. Other than you know Fright Fest, they got all their kind of seasonal things that they're doing. So it's good to see them kind of. Um, it's not just Fright Fest anymore. They got you know holidays in the park. They have their tasting, Scream Break, uh, the DC. Uh, villain, heroes and villains, which is again really cool. I was geeking out because it's, you know, it's Batman and there's Batgirl and Wonder Woman and Supergirl, and I'm just like, ah, can I take a picture with you, please? Never, ever get rid of the kid. The kid is Never. always in the mindset, man. The it's kid always is always there. there. Always, always, your inner child there. is always in you, man. It's it's yes. it's gonna be. A part of your life, man. That's what the, that's what we take all the. Yeah. I do the same thing. I'm like, that's Batman, right? I'm taking a picture of Batman. Just, yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. You know, uh, yeah, dude. It's gonna be a, a good year. Me and Rob have already been talking about wanting to go same night opening night so we yeah. can experience everything. Yeah. Now we got wireless mics going. I yes. mean, opportunities opportunities are endless, bro. We're gonna have to drag. We're gonna have to drag Sammy out there. I need to see Sammy go through the conjury maze, and he's gonna be mic'd up. Oh yeah. All yeah, four of us, so I think, I, will be Mike. Like, Me, you, Hayes, and Sammy yeah, will all be Mike. I, I need to see Sammy come face to face with the nun. That's I, I, I think I do too. And it needs to happen. I, I already told Sammy I will pay for his flight out here and I will pay for his ticket if I can see him go through the nun. And I know and I can't I, record it, but I will mic him up and just record the audio and that'll be good enough wait, for me. Wait, wait, why can't we record it? Well, if he comes out for media night, we can. But if, if he oh, doesn't yeah, make yeah. media night, then we just got to record audio and just yeah, yeah, yeah. use yeah, our that, imaginations. That'll, yeah, that'll, that'll still be hilarious. I could just You're blend it. I can bleed it into like the yeah. already POV that we already have. So then it sounds like Sammy's going through it. But he wasn't even there the day of the recording. Oh, man. He was, he was there with us in spirit. We had to clap sync it. <laughs> oh That's man hilarious. no I, I i think we're in store for a great year dude i really do oh, for sure. um for sure and i think we got more announcements coming our way uh we'll probably get more info at midsummer scream yeah. um i'm excited it's gonna be a great one now oh yeah this this is i think probably the most like excited i've been for six flags in a long long time now, 100%. And I remember you and I were talking a little bit about that on, on Instagram of, like, how excited yeah. you were. You're like, I don't oh, think yeah. I've ever been more excited for Six Flags than I have right now. And I'm like, that, yeah. that good. That, that they're doing it's, their job. It, it's, it's a crazy thing. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with everyone. I've, I've, been, I've been with Six Flags ups and downs. Everyone's got ups and downs. Everyone's got ups and downs. 
but like it's so exciting to see like from like just how far they've come up with getting all these ips i'm just like I, i'm this is a real smile it this, is that's, yeah a I'm, genuine I'm genuine yeah. smile I'm so excited. next thing i want to get over uh and talk about uh it's gonna take a little little bit they got two minute 30 video now rob i'm gonna probably have you uh watch it on the okay. twitch page if you can i don't yeah, know if you're on go, there right now um there. but this was recorded by me on uh saturday which i believe was the 28th of june um and we uh were out in vegas and we were on our final day we were actually on our way out before we stopped by area 15 which is behind it is the future home of horror unleashed at uh the the new year-round hhn that's going to be happening there tons of progress tons of progress with this one it i i would say the only thing left for them to do is run your plumbing electrical and building inside the entire building's up and we're nice. gonna sh we're gonna show you an, an entire 360 uh drive around i had uh shout out to hayes she was driving uh and she did a phenomenal job as i was filming to get us that 360 view of the entire building so we're gonna show you um from the start in the back right directly in back of area 15 you're gonna see uh the big building and it's up you're starting to see stuff that's relating to the concept art so let's take a look at uh, Horror Unleashed, and I'll be commentating because I just kind of muted it since we were just kind of filming real quick. But uh, here is the uh, construction that uh, we caught for Horror Unleashed. Now, if you guys look right here, it's going to stretch out to the, I believe, 15 freeway right here. Uh, and that's the freeway that if you look to the – on the other side of that is the Las Vegas Strip. And uh, right across from the other side is area uh, on the other side of behind me would be area 15 right across the street What you're looking at right now is horror unleashed now as you guys can see this lot is huge I mean you got I mean there's gonna be a lot of parking it looks like probably right here or there might be a lot of outdoor stuff right here not quite sure yet about that however if you look at the building itself I mean the one thing that me and Hayes were talking about a lot on this vacation is how many mazes do you think this building alone can can hold potentially? Um, but if you look at the front, it's very reminiscent. And I'll pause it here. If you look at this front facade, and Rob, I don't know if you've seen the concept art to what this is supposed to look like. Okay. Um, but in the concept art, we had this kind of what looked like a rundown warehouse. Uh, with exactly like you see the little circle kind of mirror on right. top and all the little yeah. individual openings All that was in the concept art. They were all shining red kind of glowing and at the entrance We had Jack the clown we had chance which was his you know his girlfriend and all that which was some Orlando Icons that we've seen out in Orlando um, And what we can see here now with what horror unleashed is kind of looking like as far as that facade goes It looks like that facade is going to be uh happening in real life looks like the entrance door might be a little small i don't know exactly how this is going to work this entrance yet we i don't think we're, we're there quite yet to see where you're going to be entering where you can buy tickets on site if it's only going to be like you have to buy tickets online kind of thing if you have to go across the street to area 15 to purchase tickets don't know but for now what we can tell is this facade is looking very similar to that concept art. So it's getting me pretty excited. Uh, the question is I have for you, Rob, is now kind of looking at this concept art and okay. looking at the construction that you see uh, and kind of the overall building about how many houses do you think can realistically fit in here, especially with this supposed to be kind of like a permanent year round location realistically how many houses are you fitting in one warehouse like this man i'm i mean it looks it looks pretty huge it looks it i'll keep it I, i'll keep the video going as you talk so that way you can say it. okay that we can see it behind i, I mean yeah. it again just depends it just, it just depends on on like how big the houses are i'm gonna shoot for like you know a, a typical horror nights house maybe like a five five minute house um, man, that, that building's massive. I want to say it, I want to say maybe like 20, I feel like 20 to 30 houses could go in there. 
it, just, dep- just, it really depends. You yeah, know? yeah. I, I mean, at the, I think if you're gonna do some solid, some solid like ten minute houses, like maybe a little less, maybe like fifteen, ten. But then also, you know, you got to think like, oh, now that I'm thinking about it, realistically, I would say anywhere from ten to fifteen houses, because I'm thinking like you got you know queues and lines and stuff, and what else are they gonna have in there? So so. I I would, I, 10, I would say ten houses. I would think realistically you can do about ten. It seems like both events do about ten properties at there, but that's yeah. theme park. Now that's a theme park, right? I could see realistically them doing maybe like six indoor. Okay. okay. If they really want to that's, maximize that space. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, I feel like that. And six is still a lot for for a building, because I'm thinking like I don't know how I don't know how the square footage of that building is, but. Again, it looks pretty massive, and I'm just thinking like, okay, like if I look at it from the top, you know, a house here, a house here, a house here, but then you got you need queues and stuff. So <sighs> I think you're, I think you're probably closer along the lines of maybe five, five to six houses. Yeah, you know, with with the queue and, and everything, you know, the lines and all that stuff. And who knows? Again, if they're gonna have like, you know, is they're gonna have like some food in there or a place to eat or drink like a bar or something because you know it is vegas it is vegas yeah, it is people, people like to drink out there and have a good time so you know that and that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna be a bonus uh to be to take you know how, let me have a drink and then go get scared so uh who knows what else they're gonna put it in there but yeah i think you're along the lines of five six houses you're probably right i'm just daydreaming with 15 yeah. houses That'd be nice right yeah i mean if, if they had everyone just wait outside and then you okay, you go inside. You could throw fifteen houses in God, there, but that would be say, in that summer heat. That would suck so oh, bad. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be horrible. Dude, but, we were just but, out there, one hundred and fourteen degrees. Oh no, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. So we no, have to you. line up inside where the AC's at inside the warehouse. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, so so five five. I think five solid five minute houses is is good for that. Now a couple that things to, to to keep in mind too. Number one, this can work daytime hours if you want to start 12 one o'clock you can do that now because you are inside and you can control your lighting control your setting inside and make it as dark as you want it make it as right themeful as you want it to per theme another question that i asked for you is you know i was talking to hayes about this do you and how do you come up with the idea of adding scare zones to this or is it just going to be one massive zone with um the characters of Universal's lore and IPs just running around. Are we supposed to be in essentially Horror Nights' warehouse and everything just got loose and everything just took over and now we are exploring the horrors that is Horror Nights' warehouse? Yeah, I think I think more along the lines of of it being just one big uh, like everything just got loose as opposed to uh, uh, like oh well, this is Zone One, this is Zone Two. And there's different characters. I think along the lines of what you're saying, that would probably be that would fit the, I guess the warehouse theme of it is that you know you're in Horror Nights warehouse and everything got out and it's everything's coming at you. So and it, there's there is no like oh this is Scare Zone one and Scare Zone two and Scare Zone three. It's just a, everywhere that's not a maze is a Scare Zone kind of thing. Now you're getting the gears cooking. I got something else I got to bring to your there your you attention go. now. There you, there you go. Let's go. You know, you, you look at all these promotionals lately, you know, this year and even last year was kind of the same theming of, of that them kind of keep something locked underneath the park. You know what I mean? Okay. This kind of like yeah. this safe, there's something in behind this door that needs to stay locked in, but it might get released and it's going to get released during the Halloween season and all fear and chaos will be unleashed. What if that door that we've been seeing especially this season that we've been really seeing that kind of underground door that's a little oh. creepy what if this is the extension of that warehouse that we're finally going to step into of all, like i said all those horrors coming to life finally and them being unleashed it is called horrors unleashed that would so, be um, that would be really good marketing I, like, I think it would. I mean, you have yeah. it with the theme parks to kind of set up this is supposed to open up roughly around next year don't know exactly what time frame what season it's going to open up in but this is set to open next year um and progression is going fast now another thing i wanted to talk to you about is when we turn the corner and we kind of look around the corner you know we got the back of the building right here obviously this is probably going to be for all their you know shipping receiving and whatnot 
Who knows yeah. how they're going to label this. I'm still very curious about this outdoor area right here, and you can get a better shot of it in this shot. Sorry about the sun. But no, you're good. it looks like either this is area is probably going to be extended parking, maybe uh, like a valet system. You know, Vegas is very big with the valet system out there as well. Okay. Uh, so I could see this for being like valet parking or you did mention bars, restaurants, yeah. other stuff. This could be essentially the hub where they add all that stuff in and inside is just more of all of the mazes and stuff because it's too hot year round to put them outside right. to have scare actors outside. You focus all the horror stuff inside and all the drinking and all the food and all the you know activities like that on the outside, merchandising and whatnot. Um, the possibilities are endless. And I, something that I didn't get on camera was when we go back uh, a little bit right here, across the street from where we are right here in this footage, um, they were look like it, it kind of looked like they were building a parking structure. Um, okay, that's that's what I was going to ask you. Is like, it was there? <sighs> Is there parking nearby? Because you know that yeah. would make sense to build parking somewhere near. Yeah, because Area 15's lot, it, it's a big lot, but it's not big enough for what kind of crowd this is going to drive. And you know, right. this is going to drive a crowd not only coast to coast but around the world. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Because everybody around the world visits Vegas, and when you see and hear about this monster, you know you're going to want to come see it. Especially if you're a fan of haunts or horror, you're going to want to come and see it. But, yeah, right. they are building what look like, I think, one or two big parking structures across the street. So there will be uh, on-site parking available, it looks like. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I would assume with a parking structure and a building and, a, and, a, and an event at, at this scale <laughs> of popularity, that makes the most you sense. Need, you need some parking. <laughs> you need some parking. If you guys have been to Horror Nights in Hollywood or Orlando... Those parking lots get fucking crowded. They, I think they actually yes, they fill do. up to capacity at some nights. Yes, so, they do. Uh, yeah, uh, parking is a big, big deal for this. Um, and there's just so much that, you know, there's so much to, to speculate, to rumor. I don't know what the inside looks like. I don't know if we're ever going to see construction photos of the inside unless one of the guys that works here accidentally leaks some or purposely leaks some, whatever you want to call it. Um I don't imagine we don't get any information to this until early next year, I would say. Maybe late yeah. this year if they want to give us a little Halloween treat, maybe a little teaser of this. But I, I, I would say early next year, like January, February, is when we're going to start getting some serious updates about this, an opening date, what's going to be featured in it. I mean, from the press email, Universal's got a wide variety of things they can pull from, from originals to the Universal Monsters to collaborations with uh, Blumhouse and Jordan Pill, uh, just the name yeah. of the few that they mentioned in the press email. So there's, the possibilities for this are endless. It could be anything. Um, I'm excited. What What is one house or one property that you would like to see in there? Honestly. It's a, a loaded question. Honestly, for me... You know, you talked about Blumhouse, you talked about Universal Monsters, you talked about, you know, Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele's got the three. I think Nope could work as a maze. Okay. I think there are some elements there that, that could translate. But I think your best bet if you want to do anything, Jordan Peele, is you do a Monkey Paw Universe film, uh, maze. Get Out, okay. Us, and Nope. I think that's, and in my opinion, in Vegas, that's the best experience you can have. Jordan Peele killing it in the, in the in the horror world right now with producing and directing and writing i think you do like a jordan pill compilation maze with get out us and nope That's, yeah that'd be i feel like that'd be pretty popular but the thing that i would love to see the most that they've yet to do over here on the west coast creature from the black lagoon yeah i mean i not a big i don't creature think fan. I, I don't i know i am a big creature fan i just don't think they would put that there i'm hoping we get it at Horror Nights eventually. We'll see. Another but. big thing, I think, especially for us out here on the West Coast, you know, and, and, and you know, I, when this got announced, you and I talked about how easy it is to take a trip out here now. To It gives you, especially you, it gives you an excuse to go to Vegas now because now you have something year-round to look forward to to get your fix. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I've already, I've, I've, babe. We're going to Vegas. And I plus, really I want to. I would love to take you to some of the the horror escape rooms. I think you'd have a lot of fun doing those oh, too. Jeez, I'll die. I'll die. Uh, it's I'll not as bad as you think. <laughs> I'll just be like, I'm lost. I'm <laughs> lost. 
I got pretty terrified in the fucking <laughs> Pennywise one. You would have laughed. We did it chapter two finally. We've been waiting months to do it. Nice, nice. I remember when you were talking about that. I don't want to give away too many spoilers of the escape room, but there's one part essentially where you walk through a door. Another and there's, door. There's giant spiders hanging on the ceiling. Oh, we and then know they, how you love spiders. And then, they, and then they close said door, and you're trapped in a room with like 10 people and two spiders <laughs> on each side. Thank God I have an amazing girlfriend like Hayes because the minute I walked in, she looked up and noticed him. She goes, do not look up. You just picked her up and blocked the spiders. I Block just, I spiders. was, luckily I was the last one in. <laughs> and so when I was the last one in, she told me about it. And I just looked down the entire, I didn't even help with that puzzle. I just looked down the entire time. I'm like, y'all let me know when you're done with the puzzle. I was the first need... one to dart out and that was it. <laughs> you guys don't need me on this one, right? You don't need, you don't me. need me. right? I'm like, you don't need me. We're, we're, we're really caught in this. We're really in a tight space here. We could barely move. You really don't need me. I'll be in the corner having a panic attack. Um, <laughs> but no, there. I think there's, I mean, there's a lot of, the, the horror elements are there. They have yeah. Saw Escape Room, Blair Witch, It Chapter 1 and 2, Stranger Things Store on the Strip. Um, nice. You know, and, and Omega Mart has its sci-fi horror elements to it as well. That's a fun thing. The horror scene is really coming up there a lot. I would nice. love it next if we can get a convention out there. Um who that would be, I, I have an idea of who I would like to see do it, uh, but who that could be, who could set that up, uh, I hope it happens if, soon. I think that the, com the, the community is really starting to build out there, and I think that we need to. I think I we mean, need to bring everyone together. I mean, uh, I mean, Midsummer Scream's getting pretty big. It's I'd love to see. Mid I I would commit to a weekend in Vegas if they went out there. I think I would have to too. Yeah. I would I would get there on Thursday night and leave on Monday morning. Yeah, I mean I I'm glad they're close, but I I feel like the event is it could happen bigger and bigger. Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. Not to mention, dude, like every hotel on the strip has a convention center. You can literally hold this. You can hold a horror convention at literally any hotel, both in on the strip and in downtown. Like all these hotels have fucking convention centers. Yeah. You can. There's the possibilities are endless, bro. It, they could happen there, and uh, you know, with the status that Las Vegas has been getting a lot lately, with being now the entertainment capital of the world, you know, F1 is there for the next ten years with the with the um, the Grand Prix. You know, right. WrestleMania is going out there next year for 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 41, and they're going to do their whole week there, and that's a huge deal for them. Super Bowl was there last year. The Athletics are coming out pretty soon. Uh, you know, it's it's. It's growing, and yeah. and and now to add the ex the excitement and the you know horror nights out there. That's I can easily take three four trips out there in a year and and be I, happy. I, I just think and how, make it work. I just think how like crazy it's going to be once it opens up. It's, it's going to be a lot of fans, be, and I and I'm be. talking both coasts. Oh yeah, for sure. For You're going to sure. have the Orlando fans want to come out to see what it is because, I, and that's another thing I want to bring up. I hope they bring a lot of Orlando original stuff, characters and everything over here, because then we don't not saying that I don't want to go over back to Orlando because I really no, yeah, do. Right, but right. it's a lot easier for us to see them over here than having to book an entire trip out there. Right. Like I said, I still want to go out there. Epic Universe is opening. The Dark Universe land looks phenomenal. I want to see that. Um, but, you know, to get a little bit closer and to see my favorite icon, Jack the Clown, on the West Coast really cool i never got i never understood why we didn't have the director as our icon here in hollywood it makes the most sense yeah it would make sense because you know working hollywood. 100 year old studio so possibilities are endless my friend and uh it looks like horror nights out there in vegas is not going to disappoint we will be keeping you guys as much up to date as possible as we can with horror unleashed out in vegas now, before we sign off for the night, we're going to talk a little bit, some horror news. Uh, and Rob, uh, before we sign off and we talk the horror news, I just want to thank you again for taking the time, uh, <clears throat> coming on the show. We love having you on. I think we need to get you on, back on a little bit more this summer. What do you think? Yeah, whenever, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm game. You game. I'm game. No, it's a, I, you, know, you, you know I love coming on with you. I'll yeah, we always have good conversations um, and whatnot. So let's talk. A little horror news. Now, I, this one kind of was a shock to me, and I, I'm still not knowing how I feel about it. This came okay. out of left field today. 
let's, but they're let's making a new Hellboy movie. Live Interesting. action. Interesting. This is news to me. This is breaking news to me. Hellboy the Crooked Man. At first, I thought this was a fucking crossover with the Conjuring universe. Ooh, that's how I was like, the Crooked Man? Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I thought, okay. It, it's not. It is okay. a high... Uh, it's a B-movie, essentially, but a high budget one it's made by millennium who are kind of like a, a crowdfunding site okay um i don't like the guy who's playing hellboy he looks too scrawny looks too skinny when you see people like ron perlman and david harbour who put on the makeup and everything and they look how bulky they looked you yeah. look at this guy i mean it's just kind of like i don't know i'm a little yeah, iffy th- about it he definitely looks a little more not as Hellboy bulk. Yeah, because uh, I mean, yeah, you, you mentioned the other two, uh, uh, David Harbor and um, Ron Perlman. Uh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, those guys are the very big, you know, jaw, the thick jawline, yeah, the broad shoulders, very, very kind of big guys. And this guy seems a little more scrawny. Uh, scrawny. Okay, I'll, little I'll, muscle I'll, on him. I would say yeah. scrawny, but with muscle. Yeah, he looks thinner. Definitely yeah. a lot, a lot thinner. Not as broad, not as bulky. So, um, interesting. So, does this movie come out, or is it coming out? Or? It says it's coming in theaters later this year. I don't think there's been an official release date yet. Okay. Um, it obviously it looks like a a, a low budget film. Um, the monsters do look pretty cool in there, but uh, you know I'm a big fan of Hellboy, so I think this will be one I probably won't see in theaters, but I'll wait for it to come out on video on demand. Uh, okay. just to get an idea of what this is. Maybe the story might slap. It might suck. Who knows? Yeah. You won't know until you watch it, right? <laughs> but that I thought it was true. interesting. It kind of just hit me out of left field today that they're making a new Hellboy film, and it's not Harbor or Perlman. So we'll see. Yeah, it's a, they I kept mean, this one I, secret. I, I mean, I know Hellboy's, Hellboy's obviously a pretty uh, popular um Comic. Cut was it? It's comic. Yeah, I was. I want to say graphic comics. novel. Yeah, it's a pretty popular comic. You know, it's been around for a long time. So, you know, comics are always going to be, uh, especially now more than ever. Comics are always going to be kind of like high demand. Um, it's it just it, it is it is a little weird because you you know we have we have two very different. Uh, well, not two. We have two Hellboys that are very different from this Hellboy. So that you know, but who knows? They can bulk them up with, you know. That's CGI or something, right? Let's see what's up. From what I've seen so far in this trailer is what it is. But, you know, like I said, I'll give it a shot. I'll, I'll wait for it to come out and check it out, and maybe we'll review it later on on a future episode of Nights of Horror Radio somewhere just, down the line. Ju- I'm not trying to take over the show or anything, just because you mentioned <laughs> you mentioned a movie. Um, are you going to watch uh, Long Legs? You showed me, I think, a trailer to that. I've seen no, the trailer. No, 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 no. I've seen the trailer to it, and okay, it looks okay. interesting. Yeah, the 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 trailer I, sh- I told you about was that was like um, heretic, heretic, heretic. That look that looks insane. Yeah. But yeah, no long legs. That looks also very crazy. I was just yeah. wondering if you were psychological gonna... horror, bro. I'm yeah, all yeah, for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. it. So and then uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it looks it looks crazy. It I'm looks good. That one. It looks yeah. really good. You a fan of the monsterverse? As far as Godzilla and like, Kong. Oh yeah, yeah. That, I know that's coming out this uh, this week, right? On um, uh, Godzilla, Godzilla Kong, Godzilla X Kong. I think it was a, a new. Uh, it was a new empire. Was that Is the that, new, yeah, new, was yeah, that, new? Yeah, um, yeah. Saw it in theaters. I thought it was a great addition to the story. I'm really liking what they're doing with this whole monster verse. It is a box office success. The kids can't get enough of this. The kids love the toys. They love the giant monsters fighting. Who doesn't love watching giant monsters destroy shit? It's great. That's what I like to see. Uh, yeah, yeah, Pacific Rim. That's all I'm going to say. It's ro- giant robots versus giant monsters. I love, love uh, Pacific Rim. It's amazing. It's such a great movie. It's like, great. As far as, as far as, I'm not saying the acting is the best acting in the world. But the action. The action is whew. It's over the top. It's, it's yes. amazing. Yeah, yes. it's great. Uh, new MonsterVerse movie is in the works and will return with a brand new movie in theaters March 26, 2027. Uh, wow. From my understanding with the way this movie was played, did you watch New Empire? I did not. You know what, though? It's coming to HBO Max. And you're going to watch it. The, and I'm going to watch it. And you're going to watch it. Okay, well, 
New Empire was more focused uh, mainly on Kong. Um, okay. Godzilla was in the movie, and Godzilla did have a, a, a role in the movie, but it was focused mainly on Kong's backstory and, and kind of his his kind of race and, ex, and his kind of you know lineage and stuff. So you're going to okay. see more of a Kong backstory in this one. The next movie is supposed to do the complete opposite and focus more on Godzilla, and you're going to see his kind of backstory with the new... Um, the middle world that they found and everything. So interesting. Um, okay, I'm excited to see what they do. What's next in the franchise? I think that them introducing monsters and monsters fighting each other. I thought the funniest part in this movie, and you'll see it in the very beginning, is when Godzilla uses the Colosseum of Rome as his own fucking bed. Nice. Like tucks nice. in, curls up into a little ball, and it's it's the <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. Uh, I was like, Godzilla is literally gonna do whatever he wants, and no one's gonna move him or say anything. Yeah, who who's gonna tell Godzilla what to do? It's like you can't lay in the in the Colosseum of Rome, and Godzilla's like, watch me, watch me, hold watch hold me. my hold my coffee, hold my hold my hold my atomic beam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm excited though. I I love the MonsterVerse. My pops, massive kaiju fan, massive Godzilla fan. Uh, and so he loves anything Godzilla, King Kong, giant monsters. He'll watch it. So you know, not not that not that I don't like the monster verse. Is it? It took me. It's one of those things where it took me um, a little bit to get used to the over the topness of it. I mean, how it's like Godzilla. Like how can you not get used I just, to over I, the top? I love that every character that's a human in this movie is just an expert on something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a Kong expert, so I know exactly how. I'm like, what do you know what Kong wants and what he wants to do? I know, I know how he's thinking. No, you don't. <laughs> he's just thinking destruction, and that's it. Yeah, he's thinking he wants to smash stuff, and you're like, well, no, actually, uh, there's more to it. There's a whole psychological thing down to his he's childhood. Tr he's trying to tell us. <laughs> but no, I, I, I enjoy the movies. I think. Um, I was a, a really big fan of. I think it was. It came out in 2015. The first Kong, like our. I mean, I got, Kong, our Godzilla. Godzilla. The, yeah, yeah. I I really like. I mean, I know it wasn't the most favorite because it was, was lack dark of action. It was. It was. Like, I like that. I really, I really enjoyed it. And then, you know, the, the movies that came out after that, I really liked them. And when they uh, was it Kong Skull Island, I thought that was really yeah. good. And, and I've I've really in it. That's one of those things where it's like this is one of those like fun. These are these fun movies that you just shut off logic in your brain. You eat some popcorn and be like, I'm going to watch two giant monsters beat up each other or I'm going to watch them beat up a giant robot. So loving it or another giant monster. That's a threat to and, and a city's going down. Yes. It, no, there's no, no, no city is safe. At this point, Godzilla like it, the, the, this franchise is gonna end <laughs> with just a, a post-apocalyptic world of every city destroyed, and they're yeah. trying to clean up as much as they can. And every time they get cleaned up and built further and further, it gets destroyed again. I feel bad for those cleanup crews that have I to constantly too. have to constantly clean. Overtime up must be Godzilla. good though. Yeah, yeah. yeah I it's mean, good if overtime. they ever get yeah, if they ever get paid, they, Kong might have destroyed the uh, the, the banks. Office. Yeah, yeah, everything. <laughs> just the whole freaking United States Treasury just down They're the like, drain. Look at, look at. We have your checks. They're just on back order for <laughs> thirty two weeks because Godzilla atomic beamed the bank. Well, then it's more like fucking thirty two hundred years because it's all radiated <laughs> now. That's funny. Um, we're just going to Venmo your money because it's all radiation now. Yeah, it's all radiated now. You'll get it in about three to five <laughs> millenniums. Uh, Tyler Maine. We all know Tyler Maine, right? Do you know Tyler Maine? I think I know. Remind me, please. Tyler Maine uh, most famously played uh, Michael Myers in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Uh, okay, also, okay, yes, yes, yes. most famously played Sabretooth in the original X-Men movie. Yes. Is returning... As the character Sabretooth and Deadpool and Wolverine to get the rematch yes. that we have been waiting for for at least 20 plus years of Tyler Maine versus Hugh Jackman. Wolverine versus Sabretooth that. round two. I saw that. How, okay. ready, how ready are you for that, for that rematch? It's 20 let years in the making. You, yeah, let me tell you something. This is how ready I am. Is I bought... <laughs> I bought... I bought tickets for two separate times because I'm not sure about my work schedule. So I bought tickets for two separate times just in case I can get off of work early. So I'm I'm ready for Are this. you gonna see I'm, it twice if you get off early too? 
Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> That's a possibility. A very heavy possibility. I might see it twice. We're going to, I think the plan is we're trying to go. Uh, well, Sammy wants to try to go Sunday after Midsummer okay. Scream. Okay. So we're going to okay. do like a whole kind of like me, Sammy, and Hayes go see it. You're more than welcome. Okay. If you want to come see it a third time, you can. But if Thank you want to go home, Thank I understand it. Um, it's a long weekend. It uh, is a very long weekend. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'm excited to do that. And there's so many rumored cameos. Uh, we got uh, Jennifer Gardner returning as Electra. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Uh, rumors of Chris Evans returning as the Human Torch. Uh, cool. Wesley Snipes potentially returning as Blade. Uh, the biggest rumor that a lot of people have been waiting to see for some years now is Channing Tatum as Gambit. Dude, I would I would flip out if he showed up as Gambit. I would just be like, all right. Let's it's got to happen. You got to do it. This is the best. This is the best. I mean, I listen, you could have just gave me Deadpool and Wolverine with no cameos, and it still would have been a fucking fantastic film. As, especially him wearing the yellow suit mm-hmm. from, like, the... Yeah, it's just mm-hmm. like... From the comic books, man. Yeah, like, it's like, what? yeah, you could have just gave me those two with no cameos, and I guarantee you this movie would have still done amazing. It's still going to do amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. Add the cameos into it. You're just, you're just giving us a trip down memory lane with that 20th Century Fox we had to put up with all those years. Which, don't get me wrong, gave us a few good movies. You yeah. know, I, I, I will say a few of the X Men movies are pretty good. I like the Fantastic Four films with Jessica Alba. I thought those were pretty fun when they, when they those- came out, when they did. Those were more. I feel like those were more cartoony. They were, but they were fun, I, you know. Like they're oh, fun yeah, to yeah. watch. They, yeah, they they were definitely fun. I feel like the X Men were were weren't as cartoony, right? Whereas those were a little more cartoony, especially when they started diving into First Class. I mean, I love that right. trilogy with oh yeah First Class and obviously Days of Future Past is the best one in yeah, my opinion. Yeah. Um, and I have you ever seen the road cut of Days of Future's Past? Like they cut her out in the entire film, and I'm like, she's a huge part of that film. Really? No, I didn't. I have not seen that. So instead of Kitty doing the psychic thing to Logan, uh, okay. a certain point in the film, Rogue has to actually come in and do it. And she was actually supposed to be a huge part of the film. I don't know why they, they cut her out, but they did eventually re- release the Rogue cut where she is actually a part of the film. And it's a little bit longer. But it, in my opinion, a lot more. Uh, it makes a lot more sense. Okay, I have to check that out. Yeah, it's Days of Futures Past, the Rogue Cut. Check that out. It's a lot of cool. It's a lot of fun. I will. I will say this though. Uh, I'm not gonna. This isn't like. Actually, it is kind of bragging. I got to see. Um, I worked at a uh, a production studio that did uh, a lot of the graphic effects for Days of Futures Past. So I got to see one of those Sentinels uh, up close and thing is i mean it's obviously bigger in the the movie but right I think, that thing was pretty massive intimidating uh, huh? were yeah, you, yeah, what was, were you doing there were you custodial there i want maintenance i did maintenance there okay. so a lot a lot of the that's how i got to meet um uh stan lee and and uh, ryan gosling they were there doing some like you uh, met stan lee i did meet stan lee yes i did i, I got stan to be lee. in the same room as him and breathe the same air as him one time yeah, he was he was there uh he was there checking out actually uh the uh, a p a clip of uh, Days of Future Past. He was there, like oh, wow. watching it in like the the little. There, it was like an office that they would screen stuff in, so he was there to, to check out Days of Future Past. And Gosling, I think, was there for he was work. He wanted to like do a project, and he came to our studio to like see about using our, um, like our gray room. You know, like it, not the green room, but everything's grayed out to like do you know mocap and stuff like right. that. So he was there to like kind of do that, and I got to meet him there. But yeah, so I, anyways, but I got to see one of those Sentinels up close and, and personal. And they're, they're, it was pretty cool. I do I geeked out so much, so much working at that place. Just I would like too, a, dude. You, I yeah. mean, you're a movie guy. I'm a movie guy. So it's yeah. like outside of comic book movies. I mean, we just love movies. So yeah, yeah. So, I imagine you got to then, see a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, it was pretty pretty fun. I was half the time I would just be like what it like who this person's here this person's here and yeah you, you got to be professional you can't be like hey, Mr. Can, I get, can i get a picture yeah, can i take a picture with you it's like oh hey, hey mr lee how you doing da, 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 da. you know whatever and, oh I got it. and then you know he'd walk away and go into this but you know just i was just like in my soul i was just like stanley just talk to me <laughs> he said Hi. the creator of spider-man <laughs> just talked to me yes yeah, yeah. so but yeah Fun times, fun, fun times. Fun times. The creator of the X Men just talked to me right there. That's, yeah, he, that's that he much. spoke. He spoke to me. Oh yeah, how you doing, true believer? 
<laughs> right, he has one of the greatest voices ever, hands down. Oh, he does. He does for sure. Hands down. For All right. Sure. We got two bits of news here, and then we're signing off for the night. Let's wrap it uh, up. Let's good. do it. Let's do it. You know more than anything, anybody, that Hollywood is very famous for doing uh, promotional events for movies, uh, such right. as pop events. The last one I think that was huge out here was for Imaginary. Uh, fun movie, right. by the way. I really enjoyed it. Um, the next big one, and you might have heard of it already. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Marketing yeah. is going to be happening. It's called the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice Afterlife Experience. It's opening in Hollywood on August 23rd and will be featuring recreated sets, live entertainment, and more. You can join the waiting list right now to get tickets. I believe when they do go on sale, they're going to be free, but it is going to be first come, first serve. So you're going to want to hurry up before they sell because this is probably only going to be here for a limited time until Beetlejuice actually comes out in theaters. Uh, yep. They do this a lot in Hollywood. They did it with uh, It in the Niebolt House. I remember that. Yeah. That was a fun one for both Chapters 1 and 2. I think they did the Fun House for Chapter 2. Um, they did it for Imaginary. So yeah. these little pop-ups are pretty fun. I've never got to go to one myself, but I've gotten to see a lot of my friends like John from the Hotline, TLEV, yeah. Nico. Um, have you been to one too? I think you try to no, go to, no. you try, we try to go to the imaginary I, 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 one. We were, we were trying to go to the imaginary one. It just didn't the time timing frames, and stuff yeah. didn't, didn't work out. Yeah. But I think we need to try to go to the Beetlejuice one. Yeah, yeah. We we can do that. Yeah, I we'll think we can do happen. that. I'm already on the waiting list, so I'm I'm patiently waiting to get our tickets. But uh yeah, I think uh you, me and Hazen take a drive down there. That that's also a cool thing too, because from if I'm you know, not mistaken. I don't remember as far as the the it houses, but like imaginary, uh, they're free of you. you obviously, you just gotta you know put in your email and sign up for the tickets. But they're free tickets, so it's yeah. just like it's cool. Like they're just le legitimately promoting w the movies, mm -hmm. and and they're letting you walk through those those you know their their props and stuff like that, and the you know their event for free. So yeah. really really cool on them to do that because you know we. I know they could charge and people would probably be like, okay, well, I'm going to pay and I'm going to go, but they're doing it for free just to promote. So that's really cool on them to do that. It's a good marketing tactic. You know, you get to yeah. really get immersed into what you're about to watch or get an extensive preview of what you're about to see uh, in the next month or so. So uh, sure. a lot of hype for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I think it's going to be another fun one. Uh, Michael Keaton returning as the classic, uh, the, the, the ghost with the most Beetlejuice yeah. himself. Uh, can't wait to see what he what one liners he has. The juice is loose is already uh, one of my favorites, <laughs> man. That's a great one. Uh, but he's back. I mean, wh how cool is it? Within a span of a year, I got to see Michael Keaton not only return as Batman but as Beetlejuice. Like, Very cool. It, it seems like, like our childhoods are just coming back to us. Again. I was gonna say, I feel like I'm nine years old again. <laughs> I know you got to see Batman on the big screen again. You got to see Beetlejuice on the big screen again. Like what? What Twilight Zone world did we get fortunate enough to drop in? Because, like, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, speaking of awesome, the last thing we're going to talk about, one thing that I've been keeping my eyes on for some time, the brand new prequel series that are going to be debuting. As of last week, we got news that's going to be debuting on HBO as well as HBO Max, and that is Welcome to Dairy, the, the, the It yeah. prequel. It's going to have nine episodes for the first season. This is brand new news. Nine episodes will be featured in that first season with Andy Muschietti reportedly set to be the director for four of those episodes. Andy Muschietti, if you guys don't know Andy Muschietti, directed It Chapter 1 and 2 and The Flash recently. Now he's coming back to the world of It uh, and producing the show along with Bill Skarsgård returning to uh, reprise the role of Pennywise. This is going to be a prequel series of, I think, how Pennywise came to Derry and how he started terrorizing okay. Derry. Uh, I think the show is supposed to be set in the 50s. Um, so we should see what that happens before we met the kids in the 80s uh, and then 27 years later in the future in modern day. Um, very excited for this. You know, you got Bill Skarsgård. I think he did a terrifyingly good job to make his own version of Pennywise. Um, right. So excited to see him return as Pennywise to see what what new elements or what new things he got to do. See a, fre a more fresher Pennywise, it looks like. Uh, and Andy Muschietti obviously directing a, f a few of the episodes, so that's going to be really cool to kind of get back those roots of him back in the director's chair for Pennywise, uh, also being the, the big producer of the show and, and kind of overseeing that project. I'm stoked for this. Nine episodes. I'm hoping they're each an hour long, but uh, you and I both know this more than anyone. HBO does not make bad shows. 
No, no, I've I've yet to see. I've I mean, to, and that's a, that's a that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, that I've yet to find it, uh, a show, even shows that I just don't like. They they don't make bad shows. Like no. if if HBO is putting money into something and they're they're backing a project, like it, they're going to they're going to give it their all. Back, yeah, exactly. You're, we're not getting like half fast. No, like oh oh, we're let's just get it out there and they're they're like they no, take like, their time. This is how we're gonna do it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like this, and we're putting out good, good quality stuff. So you know, you say HBO, and you know, I've heard, I've heard, uh, you know, the as far as them, you know, talks of doing Dairy, and uh, you know, just the story of of Pennywise, how he came there, and HBO being attached to it. And I'm just like, all right, like you say HBO, I'm like, sign me up, whatever it is. I, at the very least, I'm watching the first season because. Again, HBO doesn't put out bad shows. No, and and obviously two of your favorite shows are on HBO: Game of Thrones and The Sopranos. Um, I, yeah, you, you have yeah. a few favorite shows, but I know those are your two big your favorites oh, yeah, that you yeah. go back Game, and rewatch. Yeah, Game of Thrones, Sopranos, The Wire. The Wire. I mean, just, yeah, I'm assuming then, you're uh, watching House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon. I yeah. mean, come on, just get the red in there, man. There it is. I know you have the sword somewhere. Oh yeah, it's right over there. Yeah, you got it's the right you got there. the sword. We right need to, the there. next thing we need to get you is a replica Iron Throne. Dude, <laughs> Robin would kill me. <laughs> That's like, replacing your front room chair. Like, keep that in the garage. I'm like, no, it got, it's got a reclining feature. I got it custom built for him so he can recline. You know what? If I got a reclining <laughs> Iron Game Throne? of Throne, Iron Throne, yeah, like, I'm sign you upset. up. He's done. He's done. Yeah. Robbie, it has been an incredible show. I think one of yes, the longest awesome. I've ever done on Nights of War Radio. And I always get that with you. Uh, there's always a lot to talk about with you, and I guarantee this will not be the last time you are on Red Nights on Radio this summer. We're going to get you back on yes. relatively yes. soon. Uh, episode 10 is coming up. Maybe you and Sammy could both be on together. That'd be a, Ooh, a wild yeah. show. Yeah, uh, we, could we could talk about stuff. We'd probably go four hours easily, no problem. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I appreciate you. I love to see what you're doing well, out there you. with thank Scott, um, with your photography, with uh, Hauntline, with Thank Nico, you. all of them, you know, to see you out there doing your thing uh, to freelance. But to know that if I pick up the phone and be like, hey, I want to do here. something with you, you're like, you'll drop everything and, and we'll schedule something. Like, I'm here. I'll throw something. <laughs> you, when and where? When and where? When and where? He's done. He's just let him know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, a lot of great discussions today, uh, a yes. lot of great news, a lot of great haunt news to look forward to. Um, exclusive footage given. We're going to be sharing that on our socials uh, starting tomorrow. This video will hopefully be out tomorrow as well. Also, later this week, this Friday, Rick West is coming in studio tomorrow Woo! to record an episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. The Mindless Horror nice. Podcast returns this Friday with episode 202. Looking forward to chatting with Mr. Rick West, uh, our yearly thing. Uh, Talking Midsummer Scream 2024, Las Vegas, and uh, Haunt Season 2024 Horror. Yeah. Go on our Instagram right now. We have a questions box open. If you want to ask anything to Rick West, I will have that open all the way till uh, we do the interview tomorrow. We got already a couple good questions lined up, so I'm looking forward to that. That will be on the channel later this week. Next Tuesday, back normal day, Nights of Horror Radio, uh, 5.30 p.m., I think we'll try to get Sammy back on the show too. Do Ooh, that. Sammy. Uh, and next week we're also we're gonna, we're gonna get back into some Wyatt Six stuff. We did see some new stuff uncover with the Wyatt Six tonight. Um, some new I gotta, uh, I gotta angles. Watch that. Yeah, I good stuff, man. That. Good stuff with the Wyatt Six tonight. Uh, and uh, we're we're gonna talk about that next week uh, as well as other stuff that we'll probably see going post Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank this Saturday should be a good one. Uh, but until then. Make sure you're following The Howling Hour on Instagram and check out the YouTube channel, The Howling Hour, uh, and check out his photography really good. Also, go follow Haunt Talk with the uh, collaborative uh, podcast that Rob and Scott from Exploring Attraction has. Uh, check that out for all your haunt needs. Um, you'll find Rob there. I think you guys, what do you guys release an episode a month, once a month? We well, are you we guys going a little for, bit more? Yeah, yeah, we're going a little more just because, you know, the haunt, everyone's making their announcements. So right. we, I think we've consistently done. I think two in a row as far as week wise. So we're on we're on a two week stretch here. <laughs> Let's just put it this way: if you get a, if you if you're gonna see a, if you see a major haunt announcement on social media, chances are the next day or that week they will post a podcast about it for sure. For sure. And you'll see a lot of the TikToks, a lot of the reels over Instagram, uh, 
and TikTok. I've been seeing a ton of them. You guys are doing great work over there. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm your host, Anthony. Thank you for listening to Nights of Horror Radio. Sh- big shout out to Mortalis for being the music for tonight. Yes. Go check out Prophet Mortalis' new single available anywhere you can stream your music. We will see you guys next week. And with all that being said, stay spooky. <laughs>